What up, everybody? GM, gonna get going in just a second here. Just gonna make sure we have all our wonderful guests locked in for what should be a very epic spaces. All right, we got some of the folks. We got some of the great folks piling in here, coming in for what should be a really fantastic spaces about top shot i'm just gonna put it out there and if you guys listen to the first mid podcast you guys know you've heard this line many many times that this podcast this show is not affiliated with nba top shot dapper labs or the nba just a guy at his house just to chat with his friends and his colleagues in the space today about what's coming up for top shot we're gonna have some top shot people up here but we came up with that we came to them with this idea so this is not there's no there's nothing, there's no, no, there's no Dumbo back channel of, of making us do the spaces. We are on, we're here on our own will. Uh, we'll see where Phil is. He should be here in a few minutes. And we're pretty much going to spend just a little bit of the time today chatting through, like, you know, kind of get some hot predictions from the experts about Top Shot. Talk about our personal strategies as well in terms of what we're doing with Top Shot. You know, I've, I've talked a lot about rejigging my collection, getting ready for this year and the years to come beyond we're about you know about we're approaching i think like the one third mark probably of the nba season at this point um you know with the all-star game looming and uh you know after that it's gonna be the home stretch so so with a lot of different packs coming on top shot so just kind of level setting in terms of where we're at positive sentiment all around these days in top shot people feeling really good it seems um people feeling good about the pack drops people feeling good about collecting people feeling really good about the flash challenges and basically the overall vibe feeling good about some of the new hires on the dapper side and we kind of want to ride that wave and, and chat with a bunch of you guys um and get a sense in terms of where you're at where where a lot of the content creators at we always love you know make some space share the stage with them um, and then also, you know, uh, chat with you guys, chat with the community. So, uh, later on, if anybody has any questions or any comments and stuff like that, where the stage will be very, very open. Um, we do have quite a lineup today that will probably grow as we go. So today to kick it off, we're going to have Swicky. We got Phil D. We got Mike Z. We got Tandy. We got Judge that I'm trying to get up here, but he just won't accept the invite. We're going to have them in the first half. Hopefully Jacob joining a couple minutes as well. And Carrie, who uh, one of the, the newer, ta- or I guess newer, she's been there for a little while, but one of the newer NBA Top Shot employees that you see in all those great challenge videos, um, she's going to be joining us. We're going to be chatting with her in a little bit. Later in the session, we're going to get Steve Ballers Blockchain, Steve, um, up here. We're going to have the other famous Steve, Steve Veerman, joining us, Mr. Intangible himself, Disney Alex, Tatiana, Mint Juiciest, Long Game German from the Philippines. We got a stacked lineup, guys, and we're going to be chatting Top Shot all day so i'm lg it's lg here even though you can see me listening that's just another account i'm using it to record okay so don't don't think that this isn't lg it's me um anyways so i mean let's 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 dive right into it i got a lot of questions for everybody um but i I think a great place to start is you know i want to know from the people on the stage right now and we can we can dive right into it i want to i want to get phil up here first i want to hear about your New Year's resolution on Top Shot. We've all gone through 2021 together as the year where most of us met. But I want to know, starting with Phil D, how are you approaching the new year? What are you what are you promising to do on Top Shot this year? Phil D, where are you at? Whoa! <laughs> how did you not Listen. start with ballers, <laughs> man, with that PFP? How do you Hold not start on, this? man. <laughs> I'll tell you why. Because I had a feeling you'd throw it to me first. I just went up six flights of stairs, okay? And I was doing, like, some special, like, crazy yoga breathing, trying to catch my breath before you throw it to me. But you went to me first, as I expected. So, um, kind of caught me off guard. But, yeah, I'll survive. That's a lot of uh, heavy breathing. And, you know, after the holidays and, and, and being kind of stuck inside for so long, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm, I'm stuck in wind right now. But I'll survive. Uh, what's That's going okay. on, LG? I have <laughs> Yo, Listen, okay, Phil D. I'm gonna be honest. With you. I'm gonna get cut straight to the point. People <laughs> see you tweeting about ballers and genies and all this stuff. Do you even still have Top Shot? That's what the people want to know. Absolutely. Listen, here's what I'm doing with Top Shot. I've changed my mind, especially with the other options with the Dapper Wallet right now. When it was only Top Shot, 
I was kind of, I had collecting strategies, but now I've, I've changed my collecting strategy so many times. I, I keep, I'm flipping all over the place and I'm actually trying to decide what to do with my dapper and how to position myself. And, you know, I, I'm kind of hesitating on buying more top shot just right now until I really know what I want to do because yeah. What was happening was I, I'm like, okay, here's what I'm going to collect. I started collecting. And I'm like, ah, you know what? I don't want to do that anymore. So I had to go through the process of getting rid of stuff, you know, you know, starting from scratch. And I, I, I'm kind of like a very emotional collector. Like when it was Olympic qualifiers mm -hmm. and right before the Olympics, I was collecting all the Canada guys going crazy with, you know, SGAs and, and, mm -hmm. and RJ Barrett's and all that. Then I'm like, you know what? I'll focus everything on the Raptors and then. I'm like, do I really want to do that? I don't know what I want to do. Uh, I have so many mm -hmm. other options on, on Dapper now that mm -hmm. you know, I want to see where that goes first. And then maybe I can, I can go back into, um, into Top Shot. But I will say this. If you're asking me what I'm promising to do for the upcoming, um, you know, well, we're in the middle of it now, but the upcoming Top Shot season, I have to say I will do everything. And I hope you get Jacob up here. I will do everything to convince Jacob to give us an old school traditional master challenge again. <laughs> That's my vibe. Man. No, not again. <laughs> no. It's true. That is where you thrived last year with oh. tracking, tracking the saga of cool cats. Hey, um, but some of the best memories people have, and you've seen it all over Twitter, were the days of the cool cats and trying to figure out what the hell the next move is. Until until they kind of put an end to that by mm -hmm. uh, I forgot what it was it was I think it was maybe Cool Cats Four they really went a different direction and they're like screw you guys we're not playing this game anymore um, no more guessing I mean how many people still own the game winners um, you know from that theory oh, the I do I do man <laughs> I didn't I start have, that one but I, is it the Tobias Harris game winner I have like ten of those still, or something <laughs> like that where I'm, and every time I go through my collection I'm like why do I have all this Tobias Harris and or whatever who, is it, I think it's Tobias Harris and I was like why did I buy all these for like twelve dollars <laughs> it's like oh yeah that's right we thought it was going to be game winners <laughs> well it's actually all Will Barton's fault I'm not going to lie LJ if, if you go back and recap. Yeah. If that Will Barton never goes from $3 to $300, because that was in Top Shot's rocket moment. That's what mm -hmm. happened there. Mm -hmm. That Will Barton went from 3 bucks to 300 bucks, and I think it's stuck in people's minds that everything would, would, would do that. But by mm -hmm. the time we got to, I think it was Cold Countries, and everybody had figured it out and bought the correct moment, they mm -hmm. actually went down in value after oh, yeah. the challenges were released, right? So, mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, that's when the buy the rumor, sell the news, um, you Things know, started, approach yeah. started. Yeah, pretty much. But I had a great time with that. I mean, it took forever to get through, um, you know, how many times did we ask when the hell is, is the LaMelo coming? When are we, when are we almost there and all that? <laughs> but it was a good time. Okay. It kept so many people engaged. Right. So. Dude. As oh, soon as we have Jacob up here, as soon as he, he arrives, <laughs> we're just going to cut everybody off and we're going to go straight to that question of when is the next Master Challenge. Oh, he said okay. they were done forever last time we spoke no, to him. So. No, 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 no. <laughs> Come on. No, 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 no. We can, we can bring it back. Okay. We can bring it back. If not, we'll make our own Master Challenge somehow. We got, we got, I think Dumbo was here. He's gone now. I think he might still be here, but, um, you know, we can, we can find a way to get him to, to do something like that with, with us. Um, who else we got? We got everybody else up here. I'll just go in the order that I see them. Swicky. Swicky, what's up? How you hey, doing? Hey, how are you? I'm great. How are you? Uh, I'm good. I'm good. You are, you, I have to say, Swicky, like your evolution from, you know, being in the Top Shot space with us to now, like literally having one of your apes licensed into Punk's comic and everything is is phenomenal to see how much you've just really kind of like spread your wings, built this, built the Kiki brand and everything. Um, but also very humbled that you come back, come back all the way over here to talk to us about Top Shot every once in a while. I still love Top Shot. It's my first love. <laughs> I'm always going to be in Top Shot, I think. What so. do you hold, Swicky? I've actually, I've never, I don't think I've ever looked at your account. I mean, we had you, you know, on the show a couple weeks back to talk about different stuff. What do you, what is your largest holding? Like, do you have a ton of Lakers moments? Is that your deal or, or um, what is it? Yeah, what do you got? I have a full set, the full set for the Lakers um, team, <laughs> um, which of course we all have to keep up with all the time. I have the full Cool Cats set mm -hmm. um, and I really pared down the last few weeks, um, I kind of got rid of stuff and consolidated everything, but I'm really like leaning out just so that I can kind of lean into sets this year. And of course, series three, because a lot of the challenges and stuff that I, I I've like, I've missed so many of the pack drops just because I had the window open and then I forgot about it and came back to it. 
your turn is over. And I'm like, oh my God, how can I forget this? So it's just been kind of like a struggle with series three. But for me, mm-hmm. like, I really love that they're taking uh, the showcases and the challenges like to the next level. Like, I would love the Trey Young Meagle. I would love it. The so what? I'm kind of the like what the did you Trae say? Trey Young Meagle. Meagle. Meagle is <laughs> another thing from like, like, I don't even know what we would call that Top Shot era, like the end of Series 2 era, where, like, the whole Meagle thing started. Class uh, with of 21. J- yeah, the Class <laughs> of 21. That's like, when you, yeah. if you know, you know. That's what, what, that's what that is, what Meagle is. Uh, for those who don't know, it stands for the Metallic Gold Limited Edition. It's just uh, yeah. a way that, I think, I think Jen and Steph started that, right? The Pseudo Sisters started that. You know what? I don't know, because I came in in, like, March, and by that time, Meagle was just, like, already We're already in, doing Meagle. In the world, Yeah. <laughs> It was already like a hot topic. So, and I didn't right. even realize that it was like, you know, something that people loved or hated mm-hmm. until about a month in. And I'm like, I'm already calling it Meagle, so I'm not going back. Sorry. Okay. No, you know what? This is the perfect like icebreaker to just get everybody, everybody to chime in immediately. I just want to hear every <laughs> single person that's on here right now unmute at some point in the next minute and say whether it's Meagle or MGLE. Whoa. MGLE 100%. Candy. MGLE, man. There's no going Meagle. Definitely MGLE. Yeah, Come on, MGLE. Now. Meagle's a dog. Sorry, Swiggy. Sorry. <laughs> Meagle. Meagle. <laughs> Migos. Migos. <laughs> Who are they? Who's Migos? Oh, no. <laughs> We're not going there again, LG. <laughs> <laughs> what did you call him again? <laughs> Quavo. Quavo? Quavo. Quavo. <laughs> Just call it like it is, man. Listen, for anybody who doesn't know. He was willing to die on that hill, too. He, like, wanted to take it the whole episode. (laughs) Anybody who wasn't watching that live show, that was, like, that was, like, literally, like, an hour after that announcement was made. And it's, like, I was, like, I don't even know who this guy is. And you guys, like, that that was one of the few times, or one of the many times, I'd say, on the show this year, where it's, like, I shockingly had, like, very little knowledge of something that everybody knew about. Like when we had own the moment on for their, their football project. And I was like, I asked if Brett Favre still played for the the Packers. It was like, that's, that's where it's like my, my pop culture knowledge stopped in like 2011. So anything after that, I'm not aware of basically. So Quavo don't know that, but Hey, if you want to bring in like Jay Z or something like that, totally I'm down, you know, like I'm, I'm in. So that's, that's how far back I go. Um, uh, I wait, like that, else, LG, that you think, we uh, were waiting for your approval to work with Jay-Z. So I'll let the team know. Yeah, now that LG at the first minute has said we can bring in Jay-Z, we'll get it happening. That's it, right? I can give you a list right now, Luke, if you want, of, oh, of, that'd of, be awesome. of stars that'd be awesome. that I'd be okay with. We're just waiting with. to hear. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. And I see Karen But can you joined, say their so... names, right? No. Well, no. Well, they're all going to be stars from before. They're not new. Oh, people. okay. <laughs> The, the newest artist I know is like Bieber, and it's mainly because Bill keeps trying to collect the Tim Biebs from Tim Hortons and the fanny pack oh, wow. that's now worth like two grand on eBay or whatever. So, it's not so LG is literally yeah. living in the past and the future at the same time somehow. I don't know it's how you're so doing weird. it. so <laughs> weird. LG's going to ask for Marky Mark. That's what he wants. <laughs> Dude, if you can get... If you can get Wahlberg on, that would be that would be incredible. Um, you know, and then that, that'd be perfect. But no, Luke, seriously, I would love... You know, Eminem just bought an ape. He's cool, okay? Um, I heard Jack Nicholson likes going to Lakers games, so he'd be good. He'd be a good celebrity to have. Um, who else? I mean, I think, uh, I think what you can what you can definitely see already from the start of this year is more people than ever, and not just celebrities, but like more people in the general population as well are embracing NFTs, and obviously like the knock on impact of that, it, like. You can't learn about NFTs and not learn about Top Shot. Let's be real. Like, it's still one of the biggest names in the NFT space. And it's also one of the easiest to get into. So I think mm-hmm. we're naturally, regardless of what we do or don't do this year, we're going to see a lot more people across the board getting into Top Shot um, in terms of like, you know, I don't know if Eminem cares about it, but it wouldn't surprise me if someone like that was interested in it because it's basketball, it's NFTs, and it's pretty easy to get into. Mm-hmm. I agree. I agree with you. And that's actually something we can, we can say for a little bit later, but I do want to hear some big time predictions from some of the experts here from the creators. And, and it can be, we can do that a little later. I still, I, I don't think we finished the Meagle thing yet. Uh, but I, if you guys want to start thinking on that now, I want to hear like your big, like celebrity athlete endorsement prediction uh, between sometime now and the end of the year. But first, hold on. I wouldn't hear from a judge. Is it Meagle or MGLE? I know that you have a really strong opinion about everything. I need to hear from you. I mean, I just can't get myself to call it a meagle. I can't. I can't. It's, 
it's MGLE. It's always been MGLE for me, and yeah, that's that's the way that that, that uh, yeah. I just Mingle just to, to me an MGLE. It's it's the gold standard, right, of the Rams. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. very official. It's very distinct. Mm-hmm. So I need the professionalness uh, of uh of calling it MGLE. Okay. So you don't you don't you don't accept Meagle as an answer like this on a scale of like one to ten. I, when I think when I like, when I, when I hear Meagle, I think of like a little bug or something. Like no, <laughs> no, a, a, a MGLE. That's what it sounds like. An MGLE is so important to me. I can't call it a Meagle. It's just no. It seems trivial. No. So it's it's gonna it's always for me. It always will be an MGLE. But it's a it's a. I know it's been a spirited debate. Judge, where Meagle are you is at? Efficient. Oh. Oh. It is. It is efficient. You are right. It, it is efficient. I, I will give you that for sure. Judge, where are you at in terms of your uh, collecting and your kind of uh, any resolutions or anything you kind of set out a strategy for this year on Top Shot? Because, you know, uh, uh, you, always, you always have some really hot takes. People love hearing from you. Um, you know, you've had some strong opinions in the past. So I'd love to see like level set for us where you're at right now going into the new year um, and how you're approaching your collection. Yeah, it's it's really interesting. And I was fortunate enough to have Jacob on the show yesterday and we kind oh, of touched yeah. on we, and we touched on this like i mean there's really been a transition to when i first joined the site in february and i just bought my favorite players and and the moments and uh players who i thought were gonna have a big year a breakout year and um it was it was a much easier time when you're thinking about what to buy and now um you know i'm like neo from the matrix when i'm tr- trying to figure out what to buy i'm looking at collector score and i'm looking at uh utility and team sets and and uh, just sets in general and what's going to be airdropped and uh, util- flash challenges and u- different utility and there's all these things that are now going into making buys um, and like the problem for me is I don't like to sell like anything uh, um, but liquidity is an issue right and, and I want to mm. be a part and I want to be able to be a, a, to take to take part in, in a lot of the flash challenges and take parts in some of these pumps right every night when when, when certain things are pumping um, so I've had to actually like rewire my mind to to like make kind of force myself to look you got to start selling some stuff you got to start t- you being more active in terms of selling so you can partake and, and and get into the the right frame of mind and and get uh focused on where top shot is heading and that's it's kind of like a gamification in ways right of top shot i mean every night now mm. it's like I'm, I'm a d i'm a dfs player in many ways now it's kind of like dfs and we're, we're, we're kind of with these flash challenges we're watching so closely and um there's a lot of a lot of really good chances uh to make some you know decent money with your you know just speculating on who's going to be in these flash challenges and i love watching mm-hmm. the games um so it, it's really an interesting time really in a super exciting time but i have had to readjust to go from just buying what i think like i was buying a lot of top shot debuts right and then top mm-hmm. shots were like hey we we, we want to focus on rares so mm-hmm. there's a lot of different like i've had to really change my mindset um, and it's been a struggle for me because I, I don't like to sell, but now I realize I, I really have to start selling some things. I want to upgrade to, to tiers, the rare tiers. And I also want to um, just consciously be aware uh, uh, and be able to take part um, in some of these challenges uh, and go after some of the moments that I think will be getting utility going forward. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, that's a pretty sound strategy, man. Do you, do you, here's, here's an interesting question. That's something I've been, I've been wondering myself and I love anybody else to chime in here too. Um, like I, I love the flash challenges and I love the, like, you know, Ibaka going to like 48 bucks the other day. And it's a great opportunity if you magically hold a bunch of Serge Ibaka's to, 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 to make a little coin there. Um, do you feel bad about it though? Like, do you feel like it, like say you held three Serge Ibaka's and you only need one for the challenge and you're like, Oh great. The other ones just went up like 30 bucks each. So I can make like 60 bucks. And like you're saying, you know, you're looking for some of that liquidity cause you don't want to sell anything. Right. Like, do you feel bad dumping on the people that, which also I was going to say, you feel like might be overpaying to do the challenge. No, 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 <laughs> like, no, 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 no. Cause you, you know what the beauty of it is. And like, and I've heard a lot of people like on Twitter and I think I was a part of this at the beginning too. Like, mm. Oh, what an idiot that person just paid $50 for a Serge Ibaka. And then I, I, the more I thought about it is, who am I to say they're an idiot? Like, mm. who am I to say, who, to put a, a, a money, a, a, how much they value opening a pack, 
right? Right. Like to get right. a chance to have an S2 pack and, and whatever the pack is and, and to have that experience. And look, it's mm-hmm. just fun completing challenges. It is. It's fun opening mm-hmm. packs. It is. It really well, is. Maybe, yeah. maybe not the S3 packs, but that's a whole other topic. But um, <laughs> like it, it's just like I, I, I think that I think there are just certain people like I, and I will be guilty of it as well. Maybe it's not the best financial decision where I could lose a few bucks here, a li- you know, but it's just really fun to complete the challenges, go after them. You feel a sense of accomplishment and then you open those packs and yeah, you're hoping for, for, you know, uh, maybe it's one in a hundred chance of getting something truly great, but who am I to really put, you know, to put someone down if they want to spend 40 bucks on an Ibaka. Yeah. It doesn't seem like it's the, the greatest move in the world. Right. But I think it's cool that we do have so many people who, who want to do that. Right. Because they want to, they want to complete this and they want to get the pack and they want, they just want the action, and I think some people need that. Um, and in the space, we all know, right? People love action. People. That's why people love the the flipping and the the, the PFPs and the rest of the NFT space. And and I think it's okay, like that. We're gonna ha- always have people who are gonna go after uh, those challenges and over maybe overpay a little bit. I saw Quig Gains. You put up you 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 put up your uh, your hand. Yeah. No. I mean, Judge makes great points. You know. Uh, if people want to pay that amount for a pack, like that's totally their decision. And if that's, you know, the value that they associated to it. Um, but I also think that, you know, you, you asked if we felt bad, you know, cause I sold my Ibaka, you know, for the challenge. Cause I just, you know, I was, I have enough base at two moments. It's like my entire collection. I was like, I don't need another pack. Um, mm-hmm. Let me get some, you know, money for it and potentially, you know, get some other moments that I'm looking for. Um, mm-hmm. And it's, it's in a way it's incentivizing holding, right? So if you do mm-hmm. hold a lot of your moments, um, there will be, especially now with like how crazy COVID protocols are and with all the flash challenges we have every single week, there are players that you may not have expected that will make it into those Mm -hmm. flash challenges. And then you can in turn buy some other moments that you may have had your eye on, but didn't have the dapper to get them before. Um, It's almost like staking, but it's not, you know, we talked about this on our show last night too. It's Mm -hmm. staking isn't an official thing yet, but holding your moments and, you know, seeing them make it into a flash challenge and then selling in a way, you are getting rewarded. So, mm-hmm. uh. yeah, and I, and I just want to say one of the really cool things um, that I, I think we're seeing, and I'm, I'm not going to speak for, for Jacob or the team, but it, it does see that it does seem that no matter what you kind of have and what you've been holding and what you've been collecting, you're going to have your day in the sun, right? So, if you see a flash challenge and the wild card for that challenge happens to be a seeing star or, uh, or hustling show or uh, whatever set it is, right? And you're like, damn it, why couldn't it be one of the mo- one of the moments that I have? Like, eventually, it does seem like your day will come, right? No b- matter what you have, what set it is, if it's a debut, if it's a rare, like, you're going to get a chance, too. And it, it, and I think it's really cool that Top Shot's doing that. Um, and again, it is incentivizing you to hold a little bit. And then you do, when your moment is in that challenge, you have a choice to make, right? You can take part, and you can kind of sell it on the pump and make a little, get a little liquidity, Right to make to go maybe go after something else, or you get to complete uh, that the challenge of that night. Um, so I think it's a win-win scenario, and it's brought a really cool dynamic um, to to the the ecosystem. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Um, oh, Jacob has arrived. Phil D, you know what that means. <laughs> You're still Phil D, still go. there. Oh yeah, Jacob. Jacob, what's up? What's going on, everyone? Happy wow. 2022. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Listen, we were talking about this before, and I promised Phil that he could ask you one question when you arrived. So it's not, and it's not a trap, okay? Well, well it's hard. I know the answer. question. I have a, I have a hunch. <laughs> Dumbo definitely already messaged. Luke already messaged you for sure, telling you what to expect. Well, I've seen, I've seen you did Phil it. on his Twitter crusade of the past couple of weeks. So, uh, oh, gee, oh, I let no. you think I would help Jacob out. I was like, no, no, no. It. <laughs> it's not. It's not what you think, Jacob. It's related to Top Shot. It's now not, I know. I know what Jacob thinks. I'm going to ask. Now he's. Yeah, exactly. I think he's off on this one. <laughs> okay, Phil D, the floor okay. is yours. I'm going to shoot my shot here. Here we go. And Jacob, I think I've asked you this before, but the the masses need to know this. I I get daily messages asking me to find out the the answer to this question. Daily messages. When when will we see another master challenge, an old school master challenge? Oh, wow. That was not what I was expecting. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Well, here's the thing. I think that when we look at the last master challenge we did, it 
became a little more than we were prepared to handle on it, right? So we did got game as a master challenge in 2020, and that was great. Um, great in the sense that, like, pretty predictable timeline. We were able to wrap it up in, I forget the exact length, but about six weeks. And then when we kind of went in on Cool Cats, I think it, you know, obviously it coincided with a time of unpredictable and crazy growth and became a much harder thing for us to upkeep. So um, I'm not positive when you'll see it next, but I think you'll probably see it next at a time when we're more confident and comfortable, like committing to, let's say, a three month plan where that can be a priority in the content roadmap and not just kind of like something that we're maintaining off to the side. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's fair enough. I mean, as long as you're giving us hope that they're not done forever and that there's a chance that they might come back and it's with better planning, absolutely. I'm still down for that. I'll be looking forward to it. Still the best times of all time, despite how long it took and, and some of the roadblocks that, that we did hit. I've never been through so many ups and downs and, and the chaos that those things caused. Uh, we've never seen anything like it. So a lot of people actually really enjoyed that. And that's why I think they're still they're still talking about it. Before you got here, we were discussing that I think LG still owns like a gazillion game winners because that was a huge theory at the time that the game winners were going to be next because of the way some of the of the moments had some some of the things written in the moments or suggesting that they would be cool cats base moments. Like people are going nuts with the theories, right? So uh, I think it, it it created a whole different level of engagement from people playing a game within the game. And I think a lot of uh, collectors really, really liked it. So if you're saying there's hope, Jacob, I'll, I'll, I'll leave it at that. And uh, maybe we'll ask you in a couple of months again, if, uh, if we get the chance. Yeah, definitely hope again, wouldn't put too much. Uh, I wouldn't ascribe too much hope to series three specifically, just because we've kind of already rolled out that roadmap and there's no set that kind of comes to mind as something that we would do that for. Um, but, who knows? Uh, never say never. There you go. There you go, Phil D. You got you got your answer. Uh, Jacob, thank you for that. Sorry to ambush you with uh, with a, a spicy question like that. But uh, I was definitely uh, more concerned about the other possibilities. That <laughs> <folks> <laughs> <thinking> of. <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll we'll leave that at that too. Then we won't go there. Jacob, I don't think anybody's ever asked you this, and if they have, sorry. What is your profile photo? Yeah. Um, it was graphic design that uh, Cycle, uh, which was like a sports creative agency, put together. And I, I just loved the artwork on it. Um, so that's what it is. It's someone hanging from a, a roof in a crowded city, just graphic design. I'll probably have to change it at some point. And in today's world, that would have absolutely been an NFT that I could have acquired. Um, but this was pre-NFT days. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, it's great, man. I mean, maybe it could be an NFT one day as well, because that would be pretty sweet. Um, you know, never say never. Same thing. Uh, Jacob, great to have you on. I do want to hear from the other folks that have joined. Mike Z, I feel like we haven't heard from you in a while, man. Um, what's uh, what's going down? What's going on in the team hold corner of the world? Uh, sorry, guys. I, I meant to chime in earlier, but there was so much positive stuff being said that I, I had to double check <laughs> I was in the right place. I'm not used to all this positive sentiment. And good vibes. So I was nervous. I was nervous I was in the wrong spot. But no, it's good good to be here with you guys. Um happy to be happy to be representing Team Hold. Not same old stuff. We're still doing too much content with not enough quality behind it, but um, <gasps> but yeah, that's that's what we're doing. <laughs> Who that's says that? Who says that about you guys? You guys just, is that self deprecation right there? Do you, is that what you I know, I I think I've created the idea that other people say that, but that is something that I've created. Uh, one hundred percent, dude. What's uh, what's what's going on with your collection these days? Because I know when I came when I came on your show a while back, you guys and your community. So I think some of you guys had pooled together to do, I think, like the finals challenge. Um, uh, you know, uh, to get did. one of the legendaries. And I'm just curious where you're at, or if you if you kind of do this this group this group investing with your team hold community, or, or what's your deal going into the new year. So we um, we don't do that too often, actually. But Dustin, Greg, and I, we did it for – it was the Luca Hollow Challenge. So uh, oh, I think towards the end of right. Series 2. Hollow. So it's, yeah. yeah, so it's that wild three-pointer where he's it's like an acrobat move. Um, 
that the three of us did that together. And I think it was because someone in our community had the Lamello and was like, Hey, we're not going to sell this. If you guys mm -hmm. want to pull together, you could like loan it for the challenge. So that was the only way we could do it because just super poor, no business trying to complete a hollow challenge. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I think like moving forward with collecting, I, and it was interesting hearing everybody else talking about it. I think, and I know we were talking about New Year's resolutions and Top Shot at the beginning. I think the thing that I'm going to try to do the most this year is not like secure a strategy. And I know that sounds crazy, but I think like <laughs> I think I think what we what I've done at least I don't want to speak for everybody. But I think mm -hmm. like I locked into a line of thinking and I was like, this is how you do it. This is the only way to do it. And all mm -hmm. you suckers are doing it wrong. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think as we've learned, like it's still like a hashtag early, uh, but that there's this it's evolving so quickly. And there's also just so many ways to play this game. And I think to just lock yourself into one, you're probably I don't know. You're probably limiting some other opportunities for yourself. So I don't know. Sometimes it's going to be going after flash challenges. Sometimes it's going to be just going back to my top shot debut roots. Sometimes it's rares, but I think just not locking myself into a line of thinking. Mm -hmm. It's kind of where I'm mm -hmm. going for it. Absolutely. Absolutely, man. Well, that's, I mean, I, I don't mind that, you know, taking it as it comes and, and, you know, I feel like we've heard, you know, we've got, we've got the roadmaps from the top shot team, but I feel knowing these guys, you know, there's still a lot of surprises up their sleeves. And even like Phil D was saying earlier, you know, just sitting, sitting on some dapper right now, being kind of ready for what's next and ready to collect stuff that you might enjoy that you don't know is coming is, is, is not a bad strategy well, at all. And it know? reminds, it reminds me too of like the challenges for a while where everybody was like, Oh, this moment's about to be in the challenge. So get ready for it to pump. And then the challenge was going to be, was announced and it was in it, but it didn't pump because we were all thinking the same thing. And I just mm -hmm. wonder, like, when we all get to this group think of what's coming next, that the value or price or whatever gets included in it already. So there's probably, I don't know, I think just, hey, and this isn't just Top Shot. It's good to keep an open mind, you know? <laughs> so I think <laughs> that's just kind of how I'm going to attack it. Do you have complete sets, Mike? Um, I have, what do I have? I've got the Nuggets set because that's the only basketball team I like because the Celtics could go to hell. Um, oh as a, you know, listen, I'm from Boston and they, they're just, they're not fun guys. I think they should play in the G league. I think we should send them to Portland <laughs> and they should play in Maine. Um, <laughs> and it's so embarrassing to root for them. So I actually switched my bot, my banner bio. I am like a Nuggets fan. Really? Now. Yeah. Oh yeah. my God, man. That is, yeah. uh, that yeah. is some serious, that's some, that's top shot level Jersey burning. You know what yeah. that is? That's that's like that is the top shot equivalent of, of posting a YouTube video of you burning the jersey. Yeah, and it, it's gonna have the same effect. Like the Celtics mm -hmm. still will not be aware whether it's a physical uh, physical jersey burning or that. Uh, but yeah, mm -hmm. I have that one. I have the all the fresh threads. I had the hustle and show set until like forty eight hours ago. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that's kind of how. And I'm just still going after series one stuff. Those that's the stuff that makes me the happiest because it was the the things I wanted the most when I first got here. So. Um, every opportunity I've been like lucky enough to get two of those series one reserve packs, which has been kind of mm -hmm. crazy. Um, so yeah, it's been fun. What, what happened to your hustle and show set? I, oh man, I feel bad. I'm going to get, I, am I going to get in trouble? Uh, <laughs> I mean, uh, Jacob's here. You can tell him. Yeah. Oh, I'm not scared of Jacob. <laughs> Come on. Jacob, Jacob and I are boys now. I'm scared of the oh. hustle, and, hustle and showroom community. Who, oh, the hustle and I, show folks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. It's dangerous, man. There's a, there's a few communities in, in top trash. We could talk about that in a minute too. There's a few communities you don't want to mess with, man. Well, and there's, there's honest, been these sub communities that developed that it's like, yo, you don't want to cross them. I'm yeah. also kind of pissed at Mike for trashing the main red claws, big red claws fan over here. And <laughs> Saying that the Celtics should go to Maine, that's disrespectful. <laughs> but, well, I know, Jacob, I'm saying the Maine Red Claws <laughs> should then come up to Boston. I think that should be the new Celtics <laughs> team. But it's like a relegation is what's needed. <laughs> I see. Okay. Forget it. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah, I think I've pissed off all of the individual communities uh, unintentionally. Like, I know the Amadou Diallo and the uh, Wolf Pack, which I've been proven wrong on. I've been proven Amadou Diallo is apparently an MVP, so... I mm -hmm. I will eat that. But um, no, I just saw the John Morant and the Giannis rewards were going like super, super high. And uh, for good reasons, I think it's people want to complete sets. But I was doing the math and seeing what else was out there. And I was like, ooh, I could, again, collect something that I like really, really want versus something that boosts my collector score. 
So I'm sure I'll regret it in like two weeks and then buy it back again. But that's where I am now. <laughs> what do you guys think? And this is kind of like an open question for anybody who wants to dive in. Um, like, what do you guys think most collectors are doing? Because we're all like most of us here were creators. We we kind of live and breathe this stuff. Where we're you know people look to us to give strategy and to to make content and all that kind of stuff and give great takes, funny takes, whatever. Um, but you know, stepping outside outside of our kind of creator bubble. Um, you know, what are you guys seeing? What, you guys talk to your communities every day. Um, you know, are people right now, the market's been doing really well the last like couple weeks. Are people right now like trying to do all these things? Like, you know, like, like Judge was saying, it's just like, are people trying to collect the sets, get ready for the flash challenges? Um, what, what are you guys seeing that maybe, you know, we were a little bit blinded to um, by just making content all the time, right? Like, what are you guys seeing in your communities? What are people kind of preparing for? Here, I can go and then get off so somebody else can talk. But the thing that we're seeing the most of uh, is uh, the the speculation for the Flash Challenges has been super fun. Like, our Discord has been wild with people trying to guess what's been happening. And a, a quick funny story. Uh, last night, I was, like Judge, building DFS lineups before the NBA slate locked. And mm. uh, everybody was ready for Derek White of the San Antonio Spurs to finish in the top five with the assist turnover ratio. He's only got two moments with one being a 12,000 top shot debut from series two and the other one in MGLE. So everyone was stacking them and ready to print if it made, it made it into the challenge. And I got a little ping on my phone that said DeJounte Murray of the San Antonio Spurs set to return. So I let Discord know DeJounte Murray's back. Probably should like do whatever you want, but Derek White's probably not going to be in it because Murray's back. Uh, little did I know, Dejounte Murray is back tonight. He's back tonight. He was not. It was not for last night. So then everybody was furious with me because I gave them bad information about Derek White. And then you know what? Derek White didn't make the flash challenge, so all was forgiven. But fun times. So you're out here just like giving false info to your community. So yeah, that's you know, that's how you answer that question. I'm like, how's your community feel? And you're like, well, I keep lying to them. So not um, good. On on brand with the 2022 or 2021, 2022 campaign of the world of misinformation. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's hear it. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Mike. Let's hear from uh, Tandy. What, what's, what are you seeing? What are you seeing down in the streets these days, man? What's going on? How are people feeling? What are they collecting? Where are they going after? Well, that's a good question. I mean, uh, Hold on. Are I you on the beach right now, Tandy? Are you on that beach? I, I actually you told me just about? I, I I left a children's water park just now. Um, uh, my kid yeah. enjoyed the, the slides of the Easy River. Okay. I even tried cool. like filming a video, telling everybody to take take a relaxing break once in a while while in the Lazy River. So I hope that comes out okay. Um, Tan- but Tandy, anyhow, can I just ask something before Tandy? Can I just sure, ask you go something? Ahead. Go ahead. When you go to these water parks, do you do you physically go down the slides as well and those things like that? I've always I do. wondered that because I don't remember when my kids were that. Is it is that allowed though for adults to, to go on? You know, if it's a kids water park, is that allowed for the adults to go on the slides as well? And Phil is asking because he wants to go down a water slide <laughs> right now. No, <laughs> man, I can go to the adult water parks, but yeah, I, I'm just wondering because I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it's a great question, honestly. And, uh, you know, I went down one of the, the closed tube ones today, and I will tell you that I got stuck pretty much. And I was like, <laughs> I was like pushing myself down on the sides of the slide, and it took me like a solid two and a half minutes to get down what should have been like a 15 second fun slide. So, so those slides I definitely don't recommend, but the, the open ones are, are, you can have fun at any age on those open slides. So I definitely would suggest going down the open slides if you ever do have that chance. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> uh, but anyhow, to answer your question about what people are collecting on Top Shot, um, that, you know, for, based on the community, it's hard to really point at anything in particular. I'd, I'd have to point to just what people are buying. And I would just say that people are still all in on get buying new packs and they keep selling out. So people, I would say, are collecting trade tickets. People are trying to complete flash challenges. I think those are probably the two main focuses and also completing sets because like like mike just said he's seeing his his uh bottleneck on his sets increasing in value i'm seeing the same the only set i own is the summer of 21 set which i think has interesting historical value and it's also the lowest uh entry point maybe besides fresh threads and i'm seeing those go up too i'm seeing a manual quickly as the bottleneck going up as well so 
that seems to be what's going on right now. Um, but also, I'm very curious to see what happens and what they introduce, because right now, like Mike was saying as well, it's feeling almost a little bit predictable. Like we can almost kind of plan ahead and, well, like we, we should collect rares and we should collect team sets and we should collect other sets. And I wouldn't be surprised if, if a curveball is coming down the down the line soon. Is anybody here? Oh, Judge, go ahead. Pull no, I was, gonna say, I was just going to say, um, you know, I know we have Jacob uh, Jacob here if he wants to drop any hints because you know who's at a certain uh, jersey retirement tonight. Uh, it's Dirk jersey being retired. So uh, maybe a little uh, flash challenge or something with uh, – I did see. I think it's an easy and a medium tonight that we got I coming. mean – I did see that. So I mean, Is like, it going to be an all-German – all German players. Ooh, I mean, Franz who, Wagner, who, German. But I mean, like, I think this is part part of the fun. Or I, mean, I guess maybe some people don't like it. But I mean, it really has gone. I mean, it's like it's gone like twenty four seven, at least in our community, and I think in others too, of like speculating and having fun with these flash challenges. Um, and like people just want to be a part of it. People want to be a part. Of, it's it's fun to speculate. It's fun um, to make some speculative buys, and then even if you end up being wrong, as long as you're not, you know spending a uh, crazy exorbitant amount of money. Um, but it's just stuff like this that, that, that adds a lot of excitement to, to actually watching the games. And I think that that's something that we've seen a focus on this year that I know I, I, I personally, it's just, it's been a, a lot of, it's been really cool to see what's happening on the court kind of translating a little bit over to actually the marketplace. And I think we're seeing more of that anyway, like with DeMar DeRozan playing well and his moments have been oh going up. Um, so I, I think like, but, but really, like to me, I've been trying to zag actually. Like what well, people are focusing on the flash challenges, I've been trying to kind of go back to maybe mm-hmm. get some overlooked S one moments. But I I do think Ooh. in terms of community uh, and like what what I see our community doing is they love the flash challenges, man. They love speculating. They love figuring out who's going to be in this. And and it's from the second is it's it, it's literally never stops. And it's really cool to see people that excited about and also the moment ranks thing. I I, I got to mention mm-hmm. it's also mm-hmm. people and I don't know if other people are, are seeing the same. Because I am in a little bubble, I also do DFS stuff, and um, people really have been more excited this year about getting in on the moment ranks and and, and buying moments just to partake in that as well. Um, so those are kind of the two main things that I see right now in, in my community that people are are really excited about and going after. I just got to I got to make two, I got to make two points on that. Sorry, before I forget, Mike, Mike, we'll get to you in a sec. Two points on that. One. It's it's like tomorrow, the day after, the end of the week is the one year anniversary of the first first Mint podcast. But what I want you guys to know is that prior to First Mint podcast, I tried to run a fantasy league in Top Shot. Like literally mid December, I was like, "All right, the season's starting. We got to do some kind of fantasy league." I started like a Yahoo like daily uh, DFS kind of thing, and then like got some people in, and I like you know some people were playing, and it was like this is when the Discord was still small enough that you could just you could just post about it, and people would like would DM you, and they'd be like, "Oh, here's the link," and it was like kind of small and cute, and. Um, and then I met uh, uh, Theo from Swish, who had already set that up. Um, and, you know, I was like, oh, he's already got a great system going. So, you know, it's, I don't know how I'm going to be able to compete with that or, or people should just use that instead. So, so I, I dropped it and instead I'm like, what else could I do? Well, you know what? I can make a podcast. So just like, you know, judge what you're saying about the flash challenges and the moment ranks and all the kind of like utilizing your moments for different like um, you know, fun aspects like that, like prospecting on which players are going to do well tonight and all that kind of stuff. It's like that, that is like literally something that, you know, I think a lot of us have seen for a long time as being something that Top Shot could do and could be used for. So um, yeah, just know that, that the, the first mint was very close to being, uh, I don't know, whatever, whatever kind of DFS name you want to give it. It's Wait, got, by, it's the got way, D- by, by the way, yeah. what, what happened to Swish? I, 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 I totally what forgot that even Swish? existed. And I, maybe it's still, is that still around? Cause I remember, I tried to like play when I saw it and it was a little mm-hmm. too confusing. And then I, I ended up not mm-hmm. really doing it. And then I forgot about it. What, what happened to that? I don't know what happened to Theo. Phil D, what, what, you got something to say there? Well, I, I don't want to interrupt that question, but I have to say this. And this is a story while we have some people here and you're talking fantasy. For those who don't know, at the same time that LG was oh, starting the first oh, mint no. and the first oh, podcast God. came I knew out, you're going to talk about this. LG was actually kicked out of our, <laughs> our our huge fantasy basketball league and he was kicked out for this reason 
So it, it's a it's a league run by local. I guess most of them are Greek and they live in Toronto. We've been playing with these guys for years. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've and we've been dominating that league. And I think, it's true. You know, what, it's true. Like the two years prior, you and I yeah. finished literally first, second. Like That's we right. destroy them every these time. These guys have and they, no and clue what it. they're doing. And I don't no trash clue. talk with them. And they 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 hate. They don't, I've never even met no, these no, guys. No, 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 no. You yeah. did not just trash talk with them. Okay. So the <laughs> the entry fee is what? What was it? A hundred dollars? What was it? 50 yeah, bucks? it was like a hundred bucks. Yeah. Okay. It was a hundred bucks. And now that LG was into you know with the first mint and crypto and all that. Um, the actual guy running it asked for people to pay up front or you were gone from the league. And the only way to pay it was either in cash. You went to meet the guy, but LG obviously is not in Toronto. I could have done that for him. Or you send them an e-transfer. E-transfer being, uh, I guess we could compare, that's a thing that they have in Canada. And I guess you could compare it to Venmo or Cash App type of deal, where you just send somebody money through uh, an e-transfer and it goes right into their account. Anyways. LG was asked, he was given two days to pay or he was getting booted from the league. And you know what he came back with? He said, I will pay you in crypto, in crypto only. And this guy didn't even know what crypto was, man. He got really pissed off. LG got fully kicked out of the league. I tried to pay him. Listen, I tried to pay him $100 in Ethereum, which at the time, ETH was like $600 US. So jokes on him with that, like literally by the end of the season, that hundred bucks would have been, been worth like at least 500 bucks, oh, if not man. more. The jokes on him, man. Jokes on those guys. You, Phil, did you win that league? Did you destroy them? I, I won the league and then I got booted this year. So, <laughs> why well, did you I get to- booted? Well, because after I paid. So I was, I was in no matter what. But when you got kicked out, I told them all to go shove it, uh, except a couple of guys that I was good friends with in there. And he didn't like that. And he said that next year I was gone too. So I won the league. It was like the second year in a row. I'm gone. We're all out of there. So it's all your fault. <laughs> am, I, am I the only one that envisions Phil and LG like the, the, the Morris brothers, the Morris twins, like Mark and Morris. And, they, and you guys have like this one bank account and you guys share it and you get to, you know, like that's what I'm envisioning. Just you guys, you know, you share everything and you've got the one bank account. I, I, I honestly, I'm, I'm calling you guys. We sleep, we sleep in a bunk bed, Judge. Yeah. Don't tell honestly, anybody. I can see it. I can see it. I love We bunk. used to on Christmas. We used to sleep in the top part and lower part, but yeah, no, it, it's kind of like that. And the funny thing is, is that if you, if you knew our dad and, and basically our parents all together, they are kind of the opposite of us, uh, especially our dad. I mean, they're very quiet. I mean, we, we cause a lot of ruckus. I'll put it that way. So hold on. Um, no, LG, out, man. You, you know, mom's listening from her uh, mom right loves now. it. She loves when we say things yeah. like that. She knows we're kind of wild cards in all of this. And, um, yeah, so anyways, LG got us booted from our fantasy basketball league. I'm not even in a league because of that this year. Uh, and I enjoy dominating these guys because LG, they were so clueless with absolutely everything. Um, that was the worst. Top to bottom. Yeah. But it, what no, an no, exit. No, no. That was like a, a, yeah. a legendary exit to tell the guy you're paying him in crypto well, only. And he just <laughs> lost it. <laughs> he goes, I don't do that shit is what he said. <laughs> we're better off here, Phil D. We're better off with everybody here. We got a, We got our fantastic... I agree. Uh, you know, colleagues up right now. We have a wonderful, wonderful community uh, of people that are really supportive of us uh, using crypto as entry fees. Let's say that, you know, like people are really supportive of that. But I have not I have not played fantasy basketball since. I'll put it that way. Even Moment Ranks, I think I, I tried one night. I got to get back into it. Um, I, I'd, lo- I'd love to play some more. But I have I have since 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 take, taken a step back from all that. Uh, instead to focus on on podcasting and NFTs. So just gonna put that out there. Um, I don't even know where we were, but I just I just want to throw this out there. T- talking 2022, talking um, good teams, and, and I do want to get uh, Jacob back in here, and I do, I do want to hear from Swicky as well, because I'm very curious about anybody who's a, a fan of any LA team. Um, I do want to chat basketball for a couple minutes. I'm just going to throw it out there, and Phil D's going to relate to this right away, is it is both a pain and a pleasure to see DeMar thriving because for years in Toronto, we were, we wanted him to be this player. We wanted him to be the closer to drop the daggers. And it's really, you know, still so much love for DeMar. Um, you know, the, the trade, the trade worked out well for the Raptors, but it was, it was hard to see him go and also to see him quite bitter about it. Uh, but very happy to see him thriving in Chicago and, and can't help but think now as a, as a Raptors fan that that's, you know, we could have done quite well with this, with this version of DeMar. Um, I don't know if anybody has any thoughts there. I don't think there's any Bulls fan here. I know, I know Zach's in the audience listening in, and I know he's probably pretty happy to have DeMar on the team there. But first in the East, can't argue with that. Uh, Jacob, the, 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 the massive bas- basketball brain. We had Mike Z 
you know, saying that the Celtics should be relegated to the G League. But if you look at the standings, the Celtics are half game ahead of the Knicks. What what is going on in New York these days, Jacob? What's happening there? Yeah. Um, look, I think the Knicks overachieved last year pretty clearly. And oh, wow. it kind of starts with Julius Randle and ends with Julius Randle. He was... The only player since Larry Bird in the 80s last year to average 20 plus points, 10 plus rebounds, 5 plus assists, and shoot 40 plus percent from three. An incredible season, made all NBA second team, looked like a genuine top 10 player in the league. Uh, This year, he has not been that uh, on the offensive end. And I think so much of the the game is mental. And uh, he's let it kind of seep in to his enthusiasm and his effort on the defensive end. Uh, so I think, you know, that's the, the lowest hanging fruit. Um, but I think it's also pretty clear that uh, a lot of last year's team revolved around Randall bringing the ball up and distributing and playing point forward. And uh, we were really successful because of that. Um, but then come po- postseason against the Hawks, they were a uniquely set up, uh, a uniquely well set up team to defend Randall, just with a bunch of guys that aren't typically known as defenders between John Collins and Danilo Gallinari, um, but weirdly like perfect size and mobility to get in front of Randall and just offer some resistance. So it was kind of a flash in a pan, bad matchup for the Knicks. Um, I think it wore on Randall's uh, kind of confidence. He got paid this offseason. I think he came into this year thinking he'd be just as good. Um, and look, I, I just think the, the pieces don't fit quite as well. Reggie Bullock, we're missing his defense. We're missing his mm-hmm. corner three-point shooting. I think Evan Fournier, um, while he brings some decent offensive spark plug capabilities, is uh, regressing on the defensive end at a, a faster rate than anticipated. Um, I don't think the Knicks anticipated that Kemba Walker would be available. So, you know, when they gave mm-hmm. contracts out to Derrick Rose and Alec Burks earlier in the offseason, to then throw another kind of guy that has expectations of minutes into the rotation, it kind of wears on everyone. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of a combination of just having too many eighth men that all want to be the fourth or fifth starter. And that weighs on kind of everyone's kind of excitement to come to work every day. And I think that's where we're at. Do you think uh, adding two Celtics to the roster is really what brought it down? Do you think that was contagious? <laughs> Kemba Walker and Fournier? Do you think that's – because, I mean, before the Celtics showed up, you guys were great. And then the Celtics got there. And it just feels very contagious. Yeah, I mean uh... – I think that there was something in the water in Boston for sure. Um, I've said it earlier in the week. I'll say it again now. Like there's just the idea of being on the hook for Fournier for three years with the team option. That that definitely is something that I wouldn't be surprised to see the Knicks do something somewhat uh, reactionary in the coming months to try to get off of that contract. Um, I just want us to kind of steer clear and, uh, you know, double down on the young guys. Cause if Leon Rose has proven anything over his tenure, it's that he's a good drafter. And I think Quentin Grimes and Miles McBride, uh, have been really good additions to the team. It's just, again, too many guys that are eighth men that want to be fourth or fifth starters right now. Jacob, did you see any, uh, or, or would you wish any trades into existence? Uh, I was on Judge's stream last night, and I was kind of mm. joking around with like a three or a four team deal in which the Knicks take back uh, Russell Westbrook and some picks. Um, I could see the Lakers taking flyers on guys like uh, Evan Fournier and Kemba Walker, mm. uh, with, who, by the way, have longer contracts than Russ. Um, but no, nothing like crazy. I think there's the the low hanging fruit rumor around of like what would Julius Randall for Deer and Fox look like? Mm-hmm. I think that's interesting, but I think uh, if you uh, if you follow the the tea leaves of kind of agencies and how players move around the league, uh, Julius Randall is signed with CAA. Leon Rose was the president of CAA for a long time. I think it would be a very bad look, knowing how many great players around the league are CAA clients that have been linked to the Knicks as future rumors 
for the Knicks to do dirty by one of the CAA clients on their current roster. Hmm. Not very deep. That's that's a lot. Uh, Swicky, if you're still there, I want to take the temperature on the other coast in L.A. where neither – like both teams are, are right on the playoff bubble. They're right on the line. Um, you know, Lakers – anything that I see about Lakers, and we got a lot of Laker fans in, in the First Mint community and Top Shot community, um, it's, it's one night – it's it, things are going great, you know, like last night um, with, you know, Russ posting no turnovers and, and LeBron, whatever he yelled at the, at the match. Um, and then and then it's like two losses in a row and everyone's like, all right, this is a failed experiment, you know, and it's like I, you know, being a Toronto Maple Leafs fan, I know what it's like to live in that kind of market, right, where one day the sky's falling and, and the next everything's great. Um, what is the what is the mood on the West Coast? Yeah, I mean. Obviously, for me, like, the Achilles heel for the Lakers is always turnovers. Turnovers and just, like, general chemistry with the team. Because, you know, they've had lots of different people come in and out. And, you know, they aren't healthy. I mean, AD's injured. Um, He usually gets injured every season. It's just really hard to find a groove. And so I think we're hopeful. I mean, like, there's three in a row that we've won. But also... The turnovers. And I know uh, someone reported yesterday that Westbrook had no turnovers that one game yesterday. That's great. Like, we need more of that because I feel like that's where we're constantly losing. It's just like the follow up. So for me, that's just like what I'm always watching. And um, they need to just adjust. Like, Russ has been there not very long, but I just think that a lot of times, there's not really a chance for them to get in a groove with each other. So I know that there were like reporting trade scenarios in December, but I know that's hard because of his contract. So I, I kind of hope that they keep him and just kind of like see what happens. I know that's like a really hot take. <laughs> because There's people for it's like, okay. they, they, you know, they want to like, they want to trade him, but I just think that he needs yeah. time. That's what I think. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Yeah. That, that's a great take. Uh, guys, just level setting now. We're at the top of the hour. There's a few other folks we want to get up, so I do want to make space for them. Jacob, I also know your time is very valuable, um, so I don't want to keep you too, too long. I do. I know we, we are all desperate for any kind of alpha whatsoever that you can share. Uh, I know, Phil, there's a question that Phil wanted to ask about the future of Fresh Threads, and if there's more you can share there, but are there any any parting thoughts you can you can share with us? Sure. And yeah, I do have to jump in a minute. So appreciate it. Um, The only alpha I can give is that you can expect a pack drop to happen by January 15th. So, you know, within the next 10 days or so, um, stay tuned for more updates on that front. Um, And then regarding fresh threads, we put it in the content roadmap uh, back in 2021. But um, it is still an open set, there will be another fresh threads drop. Um, after the trade deadline. So players on the move uh, will be kind of paying close attention to some of the names that have been mentioned in the last 10 minutes, uh, and we'll be excited to see them sporting fresh threads uh, maybe past the trade deadline. So a lot of good stuff on the horizon, um, but yeah, that's about as alpha as I can get for now. We'll take it, man. We will, we will take it, and we appreciate your time. Do you have uh, last parting words from Jacob, and then we'll and then we'll get around to to, to the rest? Um, do you have any bold predictions in general? Whether it's NBA, whether it's who's going to win MVP, whether it's uh, where where Top Shot is in a year, any bold predictions you could throw at us, Jacob? Before we let you go. Ooh, good question. Um, I think <laughs> my bold prediction as of today is that we might see the Memphis Grizzlies in the Western Conference Finals. Ooh, wow. A lot can change, and I'd probably give them the fourth best odds to win the West. But I think if you look at just the trajectory of playoff basketball, teams generally, when they're legit, they generally arrive one year earlier than expected. Uh, They've proven with or without John Morant, they can win. They're extremely deep. And yeah, they've just got a little bit of this lightning in a bottle. Um, with that being said, I would still probably put pecking order in the West with Golden State, Phoenix, Utah, and then Memphis with the best chances to win the West. But if we're being bold and making predictions, let's go with Memphis in the Western Conference Finals as the bold prediction for today. Beauty. Hey, Jacob, okay, one last thing, just a yes or no question. 
is Bismack Biombo back in the league. The biz is back. <laughs> and actually, I think, like, you know, all jokes aside, I think he actually would have really helped the Suns in the finals last year because he's one of the mm. few guys in the league that's gone up against Giannis and has just mm-hmm. offered some resistance in the past. So they got JaVale McGee to be that backup center this year, but wouldn't be shocked if they keep Biz around as a third stringer for the hey, listen, man, the, the Raptors run to the Eastern Conference Finals years ago uh, was, was, was with Biz as well. Absolutely. You know, Didn't he, he have 20-plus rebounds in a game? Uh, oh, it yeah. Was like, it was fresh off of the back of the year before Tristan Thompson doing something similar. It, yeah, yeah Biz, exactly. Biz is better than people remember. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He's a great spark plug. He's, he, he's uh, especially in the playoffs, I found I was really impressed with him that year, the Raptors. So, um, yeah, great. It'd be great to see him, uh, you know, back in the spotlight sometime and come the postseason. Appreciate Jacob. you all. I got to jump, but thanks so much for having me. And uh, LG, as always, excellent work here. Cheers, man. Thank you. Um, okay, well, let's. There's a, there's a few guys. I don't know if anybody had to depart, but I did want to get a few other folks. Um, so if anybody, what I want to hear from anybody who's, uh, who can graciously exit the stage. So we get some of the other folks up here. What I want to hear from you is what, like, I want the bold prediction for top shot for 2022. Like, and I don't, I don't mean like, Hey, there's going to be a hollow moment of LeBron or something like that. Like, no, 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 no. I want something like way out there. Like I want like a Phil Phil D level theory of something insane that's going to happen that no one's expecting. It's got to be a hot take. Um, so anybody, I think it. I've got one. Uh, maybe it's not a hot take. Maybe it is, but um, all-star weekends coming up. I'm expecting big things. Um, I mean, Ooh. especially after the announcement we had uh, in December last month, um, like that was already crazy. So I think that they're preparing more, uh, you know, for bigger things. Maybe we see a Super Bowl commercial and then also something in All Star Weekends back to back. I don't mm-hmm. know. That'd be kind of crazy if, if mm-hmm. you ask me. Super Bowl commercial. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna I, I, I like that. I see it. Yeah. Maybe February is the month. Just like last year. Hey, don't forget. Exactly. Last year. Let's February, February too. Let's go. Was the month. You know, we're approaching the one year anniversary as well as the the Bales article, right? Which is what really set things off. So who knows? Maybe February just just becomes the annual Top Shot goes totally berserk month. Right, like maybe that's that's just what we're in store for. So I love that, Clue Gaines. Um, thank you, man. I don't know if, I don't know if you're sticking around. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to jump off now. I just wanted to, to put that in there. Also, really quick before I leave, Kyrie Irving comes back tonight. I needed to put that in there. So uh, very oh. important as a Nets fan. So mm-hmm. yeah, I'm excited. Mm-hmm. Best yeah, of, best of quickly, luck. Wait, yeah. shout out Clue Gaines because not uh, because of Kyrie Irving coming back. Clue Gaines actually has given away like ten. Kyrie mm-hmm. Irving moments today in the team channel for Brooklyn Nets. So shout yeah. out uh, to Gaines for that. And then it inspired more giveaways. So I just want to shout him out because he's too humble to do it himself. I think that's awesome. Oh, that's, <laughs> thanks, Tabo. I appreciate you. I want to hop off now. Uh, thanks for having me, LG, and everyone. Great to chat with you, man. Cheers. Thanks. Hey, Cheers. Luke, Luke are, you, are you riding around on a scooter right now? No, nah, my apartment had a power cut, so I've got no power. So I'm in a Starbucks. So sorry for the background noise. That's all good, man. Yeah, I just I just heard some honking and stuff, and I was like, "Is he is he legit riding around?" <laughs> that might be preferred, vehicle. to be honest. That might be. Preferred. <laughs> oh, it looks like a few other people just peaced out, man. Judge vanished. Uh, Mike Z vanished. So I'll just say thanks to both you guys, Judge and Mike Z, for for hopping on. They they jumped off the stage a little a little prematurely there. I did want to get some hot takes from them. So maybe Judge, if you can you can DM me. I know you've always got some spicy ones, and Mike Z as well. Um, Tandy, are you are you hanging out, or are you back to the beach? Yeah, I'm I'm here. Uh, my connection might drop in and out, but I, I thought of something just now that that's pretty spicy. Something that I kind of like to see, um, which mm-hmm. is that people love these flash challenges, right? But the flash challenges are sort of everyone is kind of uh, putting their lineup there and getting a pack in return. And I'd like to see something that feels a bit like a dueling battle of sorts and i feel like we someone talked about this months ago i think it'd be pretty cool to see almost like duels and you collect points and there's some kind of things that you win over a period of time and i think um there's an nft lg i think you're part of it right now where people throw their nfts in the ring and it's just like one man two men enter one man leave or something like that um Mm -hmm. i think that would be kind of cool if people put up lineups and over the course of several weeks almost like fantasy style and then there's prizes at the end. That, that would be a spicy, I don't know how spicy it is, it's kind of like something I'd like to see. 
but I like it. maybe I'll make it spicy by saying we're going to see a, that in 2022. There you go. A, a, a request. I love it. Thanks, Tandy. Uh, I just want to jump over to Carrie really quick because I know her, her time is also limited. She probably got to hop out onto the streets, make some more challenge videos. Carrie, what's up? Thank you. Thanks for coming on the first minute. We've never had you. Uh, we've just seen you in the great videos and, and eager to hear uh, what you're up to on the Chop Shot side. Hey, I mean, thanks so much for inviting me up here. I'm just super stoked to talk to you guys. Love this community. Um, and yeah, the, the videos outside my house filming. <laughs> That's that's awesome, and I, you know, I Phil's in Toronto, and and I grew up in Toronto downtown area. So there's, there's sometimes you're walking around, I was like, I think I know where that is. Not going to out it, uh, but I gotta say, you live. I think you live in a trendy neighborhood. I'm just going to put that out there. Yeah, um, Graffiti Alley. It's a good place to shoot. Lots of color. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> you know the spots, uh, Carrie. What if uh, what was your what was your official start date on the Top Shot team? Yeah, so I've been here for three months now. It feels like three right. years, I think, but. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I started, I think my first week was like the first week of October. So three months. Nice, nice. And what, man, I, you know, it does any, a day in, NF, in NFTs, as you know, feels like a long time, but tell me what's, what has that been like, even compared to, to past work experiences, whatever is just, is just, this has been, this has been the totally new world that, that you thought it might be. Oh my gosh. Yeah, no, I absolutely love it. I mean, I come from the traditional media background mm -hmm. i've been in sports for like 10 years started out at sports center was working at sportsnet as an associate producer and then mm -hmm. went more so on the social side with uh the gist it's a startup for it's a sports media startup but geared towards women um and mm -hmm. our main like bread and butter was a newsletter but i launched mm -hmm. all their social pages and uh did that for about two years and then joined the top shot team in october but yeah my background is very much so not in the tech sports uh, world so it's been not an in, in like I feel like that's where this industry is totally going so it's just been like a lot more fast paced and I was in a startup before at the gist but like top shot is just like on another level it's so much mm -hmm. fun um, I found in my previous jobs like they were amazing I've been such a sports nut my entire life I have a twin brother so I've played a million sports very wow. competitive all of that kind of stuff but um know the the tech side of it and the nft world is like super super cool and i feel like top shots like really at the the helm of it all so it's been really really fascinating to be a part of it wow i love i love the you immediately went into a personal detail of having a twin brother <laughs> oh my god <laughs> okay okay right i on. am taller i must put that out there. <laughs> oh wow okay yeah, very cool um very cool. What's the, uh, I, I gotta know, and, and I'm sure you, you like two questions for you, Carrie, and I know we don't have you for very long. One, what is the process for making those videos? Like from beginning to end, clearly, you know, you're an accomplished producer here, so you know, you know what you're doing, uh, but what does that process look like? And, and I want to know, like, at what point you get the info from like Jacob and team, and then what the deadline is, if it's like an hour later to, to get that thing out. And then also, um, you know what, what? What you know? What else? What else is in store for for Top Shot Social that uh, going into the new year? Yeah. Okay. So the video front, um, I've been making these type of videos for like years, just mm -hmm. on different platforms. Like I worked with uh, Blog To in the past as well, so highlighting all the restaurants in Toronto, um, and that was like super fast paced and kind of introduced me into the social video front. So I'm trying to like incorporate all of my experience from my past jobs and incorporate it into Top Shot and make it super fun and punchy. Um, make them really fast like social is such a fast moving platform obviously so it's like how can I get my information as fast as possible but also be engaging and I feel like TikTok like really changed the game like two years ago when it really exploded in terms of just making it super relatable and like not so like I wouldn't say it was like super polished is what I came from like at Sports Center or Sportsnet where it's like you're in a studio and it's very you know long format so i tried to make it like super just punchy here's the deets you need to know 20 30 seconds and you're good to go um so start to finish essentially i will find out what the flash challenge is i take that i write my script i go to my lovely studio graffiti alley and then i <laughs> i like do I, i'll break it up too so like i'll take like you know 10 like five seconds here two seconds here and i'll before I even shoot, I'll time it out so it's no longer than like 35 seconds, uh, right. depending on what the challenge is, obviously. And it's going to like the Christmas Day challenge, since we had three tiers, it was a lot longer than what we would do in the past, like with some of, of the course. other ones. But mm -hmm. um, making sure that it doesn't go over a minute if in general. And then 
yeah, filming those. And I work with an awesome editor. His name's Noah on our team. And he's just like, he comes from the MLB and he's just wonderful. Mm. I send him my clips. I like name them like video one to 10. And he just like does his magic and puts them together and packages them within an hour. Um, so that's the process there. And then mm. what was your other question? I'm so sorry. What what else we got? What's all, what else is in store from the Top Shot social team coming into okay. the year? Yeah. So, I mean, right now we're also hiring for the Top Shot social team. So if you want to check oh, out my LinkedIn... I'll also toss it on Twitter too, um, but looking for some social members to build out our team. Uh, really want to dive into different platforms. Hint, hint, TikTok. Would love to do that. So um, looking for that kind of stuff. And yeah, I mean, like in general, like trying to just be as playful as possible, um, you know, making sure that we're highlighting the community and making sure that like we're also bringing in new users too. So having a nice balance there, but really like building out our personality and having fun with it, to be honest. Beauty. That's great. I mean, yeah, we keep seeing, we keep seeing more members being added to the team, both content and social wise. So clear that, um, you know, you guys are building something special and, and you're going to have, you know, additional firepower on top of what you guys have right now. So, so that's great to see. Um, Carrie, I mean, I don't, you know, you're, you're, you're still new to top shot, right? And you're three months in, um, do you have, before we let you go, do you have any, any bold predictions? I mean, you, I, I'm sure you, uh, you probably can't give alpha and I, I, I don't want to ask, right. But just in case do you have anything you can totally share, but otherwise, do you have any bold predictions for, for top shot or even just for the NBA, um, or NFTs as a whole this year? Yeah. I mean, within my last three months, even like just being introduced more so to the NFT space, it's crazy. And I feel like it's just popping off like crazy. So seeing it more mainstream, even like some of my girlfriends who are somewhat into sports, but not super into sports are starting to rip packs and asking me like what to do with them and like, and whatnot. So getting some more educational content out there so that when people come to our page, they're like, okay, this is how I can participate in a flash challenge, or this is how I can participate mm -hmm. in this, um, making sure that we're all equipped for that. And then my bold predictions, I'm a big W person. I love the WNBA, love the NBA mm -hmm. as well, but with Becky Hammond in Vegas now, I think they're going to win a ship. I mean, and then maybe, you know, a couple of years from now, a couple of ships under her belt, maybe she'll get a head coaching job in the NBA. Wow. Okay. Wow. That's, I, that's the kind of bold prediction we wanted. I love that. Like a, a big W prediction. <laughs> I said it first, in terms of right? What, yeah. You said it first. Yeah. No, that's a, that's great. And you're, you're talking stuff, you know, you know, in the middle of the off season right now, when, when we're still a couple months out from, from turning back to, uh, and, and, and looking at WNBA on top shot and in general. So, um, very cool. Love that. And that, that is, that is huge news for Becky, um, you know, and for, for, you know, she's definitely earned it and, and it'd be great to have her back in the NBA. And I, I, I like your prediction. Like that's a, per, that's exactly what would happen. You know, is that, that she'd go over there, they'd just crush for a couple of years and they'd be like, okay, cool. Like she's coming back and she's gonna be head coach. Yeah, <laughs> right? I mean, that'd, be, that'd be awesome. Like, absolutely. And she has such an epic squad with her too. Like Liz Kempe, mm -hmm. Shaja Wilson. They're like, they've just been kind of like at the tip of the iceberg as well in terms of like, getting to that final spot and actually mm. securing the ship but we'll mm. see i don't know i'm hoping so i really like them um and dallas is a really fun team to watch as well but i have to hop thank you so much for having me and again Absolutely. like would love to hop on here more often and uh, again thank you to the community for being so awesome and supportive even with like the videos that i'm testing out and i'll be popping into the discord more often too just to get some feedback and and just really hope that like I can create some content that the community is really excited about. Beauty. Well, thanks so much, Carrie. It's great to chat with you and, uh, and best of luck at everything. We'll be looking forward to the tonight's flash challenge video. Yes. The easy and, we'll and hard soon. ones. It's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's already filmed. Yeah, of course it's already done. Yeah. Okay, great. <laughs> Beauty. Okay. Thanks, Carrie. Bye Cheers. guys. All right. All right. Let's level set. We've, we've lost some members. Swicky is, is gone. Uh, Mike Z, who knows? He's gone. Uh, but I did get, I did get a, a, a bold prediction from the judge. Okay, so I'm just going to read it out. He left, but he did leave a bold prediction in my DMs. He said, well, he, he said first, he doesn't want Jacob to get mad at him. But he thinks the app may be closer than we think, and it's an instant game changer. He also wants to emphasize he has no insider info, uh, but Top Shot loves to underpromise and hope to deliver and he thinks that the app is coming soon and that we moon uh and that that's going to coincide with a dangerous term in the top shot streets which is marketing 
There you go. That's that's the take. That is the take from the judges. An excellent take. Um, let's turn to uh, somebody who's been just chilling in the wings, and, and we we're talking about Liz Cambage, um, Steve Ballers Blockchain, the man who who got up at six a.m. to join this, and then I made him not say anything for an hour. What's up, man? <laughs> how you doing, man? Happy twenty twenty two. Thank you. I mean, how, how, yeah, I feel like you're further into 2022 than we are because it's always like, especially here, it's like on oh, the West Coast, like we're so late in the world time zone that it's like, it's like, I always feel like it's like, it's like still like Christmas when you guys celebrate New Year's. I know. I've always got to be t- uh, careful on Twitter. It's like, Happy New Year. It's like, oh, I don't know, you guys aren't there yet. Yeah, not even close. Like we're not even, we're like, we're still having <laughs> breakfast, you know, the day before. Like we're not even at resolutions yet by the time you guys are hitting New Year. But it's always like, that's a memory from childhood is seeing like, Oh, in Australia, they're rigging in the new year, like just just like a day ahead of us. So yeah, um, yeah, New Zealand get in there first, but uh, it works really well for yeah, NBA games actually, because it's like nine to five. You just watch NBA games; it's great. Mm. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, because you get all the New Year's games, so that's perfect. Uh, Steve, mm-hmm. I mean, we haven't even talked uh, strategy or or resolutions or anything with you, so just just gonna level set for everybody listening. Um, you know, we're chatting strategy, previews, bold predictions for twenty twenty two. We've heard from members of the Top Shot team. We've had. Jacob joined us, gave us some yeah. hot takes on NBA games come or uh, uh, on the Knicks and, and other big, big predictions to the NBA. We had Carrie give us her, her her walkthrough of how she makes all those excellent videos and some takes on the WNBA. We've had lots of other great community creators join us. Um, and here we're, we're in the last little like half hour, 45 minutes here chatting. Top Shot 2022. Steve, what is your strategy going into the new year man like what are you what are you collecting what are you holding what are you willing to let go at this point yes strategy is an interesting question right because i think it's different for everyone so it got me thinking so i'm I'm never one to like i'm more of a person just make informed decisions if other people are doing that hence the videos then i'm pretty happy but it reminded me of a story and just fair warning i'm holding a baby as usual when i make an appearance on the first mint um dude we love it man it's a family <laughs> show it's a family show other than other than lg at night lg after dark which happened once uh, otherwise it's a family show so we're happy Jeez, we're lg really after dark that sounds sketchy as heck that was with the old um, cats it's a whole other thing dumbo's here he's gonna tell you all i know right point but yeah anyways but yeah no it was a family show man we want we want to hear the baby we want to hear from the baby but my my strategy is pretty simple i just have fun i just buy warriors i buy aussies and people i think that are good players and mm-hmm. You know, every now and then I'll, I'll look at um, a set. Recently, I did the archive set for fun. So, it. But before coming on here, it reminded me of a story, and I hope I won't name him by name, but I hope he doesn't mind me telling it. He um, he joined. I remember he joined our Discord. I remember the day, and he introduced himself, and everyone welcomed him. And before you know it, you know he had five moments gifted to him into his count, and that says a lot about Top Shot as well, right? That's what's really great about it. Um, but he reached out probably. A month ago, he said he's really down. Everything he seems to do is going wrong. And it really surprised me because he was always quite positive on Top Shot. And he loved doing it. And so I, was, I said, I looked at his account and I said to him, it looks like you're playing someone else's game. He's he stacked all these, you know, Top Shot debuts, um, TSDs that, you know, he doesn't even like from teams he doesn't support. And it says, it looks like you're pr- trying to predict the weather. Like, and the weather being the market, he was mm. he was betting. He wasn't collecting, and then he mm. felt down when it rained. So I sort of said to him, "You just need to sort of reset and do what you like, have fun." Um, and he came back to me a month later and he said he turned it absolutely all around. He's really happy. The account, you know, the way it looks has changed. Um, the challenges he's doing challenges. He's close to completing a set, and so all that he did in like a month just by having fun. And, you know, look around the room, you know, there's so many communities and sub-communities here. And if you haven't found your tribe yet, it's not because it doesn't exist. You know, they're out there. You've got the Hustlin' Showroom, the Monstars, Team Hold, uh, Shot Talk and Wolfpack, TSTBB, which I share with um, NBA Top Shot Talk, First Mint. You've got other places like Own the Moment, Live Token, Data Nerding Out with John Boy Beats. And you've got the team sets within the Top Shot Discord itself. I like... Mm-hmm. If you can't find your tribe and all that, if you, you can really find help anywhere you look, really. So Judge is right. You know, moments, everyone will get their day in the sun. I mean, Paddy Mills played fantastic on Christmas. People were laughing less at me then because <laughs> everyone needed a Paddy Mills, you know? So I've I'm always tra- said, I don't recommend yeah. people do what I do, like collect Aussies and, and just have fun. But he's right. Every moment will sort of get their day. And I also think of divisions like, 
sorry, tiers. I think of tiers like divisions. So I can't play division one. I'm not good enough. I'm not a good enough player anymore. Kind of like the old basketball term, right? But I can I can dabble. I can contribute into the rare game and I can definitely play in division three in commons. Um, but you can do a lot with patience, packs and people, people being the community that you hang out with and the people that you gravitate to. So that's just my strategy. Have fun. It's pretty simple, really. Who's, who, who is that beautiful baby we keep hearing from? This is Bella. She's Bella, very, right. we've, seen, we've seen her on the show. <laughs> I'm dad. <laughs> She's uh, <laughs> um, 13 months old. You have seen her on the show. She debuted on the first Mint stream. Um, and yeah, she's, She's quiet when I'm not when the mic's off, and then she's loud when the mic's on. You know how it works. She's got hot takes she wants to share, man. She's got some predictions for Top Shot for this year. Clearly, she said a Top Shot collector will buy the Celtics and hire Mike as GM. I like that. I, I like that take, man, for sure. That's, that's the spiciest take we've heard so far today. <laughs> um, I was just going to jump in. Uh, just on what Steve was saying around like the communities finding the tribe, etc. Like. I would say my prediction for this year is I think we're just going to see that grow more than ever. I think we're going to see more of these little sub-communities, more of these groups, and more people being empowered to sort of uh, take things into their own hands and making these groups. We've seen the work of, like, Huston Showroom, Jurassic Park, uh, the Cool Cats Discord, all of those over the last few months, and, like, they're creating some really cool stuff, and I think we're just going to grow more and more, and I'm really excited for it because it's going to mean more creators, it's going to mean more community events, it's going to mean more utility, effectively, that's community-driven, so... For example, the team set channels, we've seen people giving away tickets to games because they now can give those tickets to other fans of those teams. I think we'll just see that grow and grow the next 12 months, uh, and I'm really excited for it. Yeah, no, I agree. Yeah. I, I do have if to I say, had a bold oh, prediction, yeah. if I had a bold Please. prediction, it would just be the same as 2021, right? Like at the start of 2021, you never thought we'd be here at the start of 2022. And I think it'll be the same at the start of 2023. We don't quite know what that looks like yet, but I think our minds will be blind again. I agree. I think we'll, well, I mean, we'll definitely be in a different spot than we are now in a year from now, but I just want to double down on, on the, you know, the community, seeing all the communities pop up is, is really fantastic. And, and some communities really taking a life on their own. And like I said earlier in the show, man, like some of these communities, like you don't want to mess with them in some cases, right? Like you don't want, you don't want to diss that wolf pack or the hustle and showroom, you know, like you don't, you don't, you don't want to cross them. And I think, I think a lot of that is Luke's doing of kind of pumping them up and, and, you know, giving giving them a little bit of that vibe, and and there's nothing wrong with that. Love to see those those communities create their own swag, create their own shows, all that stuff. So shout out everybody, all the community builders in Top Shot. There's plenty of them, and a lot of people, you know, really cutting their teeth in in the NFT world. Um, you know, through Top Shot and through the communities here. Um, I've been trying to get some. Uh, I've been trying to get Tatiana and and Mint Juiciest up here. Uh, so if you guys are listening, please request to talk. I tried to send you the invites. It's uh, you know, uh, Twitter Spaces is not perfect, uh, but we do have Alex um, that I've chatted with a couple times. Hey, Disney Alex Max, up? dude, what's up, man? Uh, all good. You know, my first Twitter Space. I'm not nervous at all. <laughs> dude, there's nothing to be nervous about, man. Just 300 top hardcore Top Shot fans listening to your every word, uh, but just like they they hang on your every word for um. For, for for your blog, man. So so Alex, it's great to have you. Let's hear let's hear where you're at in terms of your top shot strategy, what you're holding, what you're letting go, um, you know, what what you're seeing out there and how you're approaching it this year. Well, I I can't say I really have a strategy. I mean I <laughs> like I always Mike say Z. just collect what you love. Like that's how that's kinda how my strategy like I think a lot of people here know, like, I collect packs, like, uh, I would say, like, about 80% maybe of my, like, account value is, like, in packs. So, <laughs> that's the interesting thing. So, you're uh, just pack, you're just hoarding packs? Uh, yes. Not oh S3, God. but from S2, I definitely collected a lot of packs. Like, I have a few legendary packs. Uh, like a bunch of like base ones, base set ones, too. Yeah, dude, you you are doing what the real Phil D is unable to do, which is hold packs for more than just a couple of minutes. Uh, Phil D is never able to do that. So wait, Alex, can you tell us which packs you're holding? Okay, well, legendary, I hold uh, full icon S three. Oh, really three. So full icon really three, and. Uh, WNBA legendary as well. Couple running backs, NBA running back, WNBA running back, 
uh, a bunch of like playoffs. I think seven playoffs packs, uh, five archive packs. Uh, I don't think like I lost the count. Holy shit, man! And what's the pl what is your plan with those? Then are you are you waiting for the pack market to open? And is that actually it's a good transition? If you are waiting for the pack market to open, is that is that part of your predictions for the new year for twenty twenty two? Is that we're going to have a, a pack buying feature? Yes, I would say one hundred percent. I think it's going to happen. Uh, I'm probably going to sell like most of them, like the ones I don't like, don't have a strong attachment with. But like a few special ones, I definitely want to like hold for like really long time and open just in the future. I think that would be kind of that would be kind of cool. What like, would make WNBA you what... legendary? I'm a big WNBA fan, and so I don't mm -hmm. think I can like I I don't think I can ever sell a first ever WNBA legendary pack. I think I'm gonna open it at some point. What What would it take for you to open them? <laughs> All. All, all packs. Yeah, like what, what what would it take to convince you to open those legendary packs? Like what would have to happen? What what would the situation have to be? I don't even know. <laughs> We've been trying to get him to open these packs for so long. You are oh not going to get him to do it, man. He has an amazing <laughs> pack collection and he won't open them. Yes. Oh, entire Winter Drive set also. All in packs. I forget that. Wow. Dude, that is insane, man. That is insane, Alex. Do you have any, Alex, do you have any bold predictions for Top Shot outside of all that? Like, is there anything you think that, that maybe we don't, we're, we're not expecting that we're going to see on the platform this year? Uh, well, I'm actually doing an article about that, right? I asked you this morning about this. <laughs> That's so, right. Yeah. Uh, I would say... Let's say Nets win the championship, right? Like, I don't think it's going to happen, but oh. let's say Nets win the championship. MKD going to say NBA top shot this when he receives final MVP. <laughs> That's my bold prediction. <laughs> Dude, that would be, that would, I think a lot of heads would explode if that happened, honestly. <laughs> yeah. People would go absolutely berserk if KD, as he accepts, like the MVP trophy or the championship trophy is like NBA. Yeah, that would be that'd be pretty fantastic. sick, man. <laughs> right on. Um, we got a few other folks I wanted to chat with. Alex, uh, thanks, man. Uh, please continue chatting sure. as we got you. Thanks. Um, yeah, for sure, man. Uh, Marvin from the Philippines. Just speaking of freaking awesome communities, man, what is going on in Top Shot Philippines Facebook group? Hey, hi, guys. Happy New Year. Uh, yeah, happy New Year to uh, you, man. Good morning. I, uh, good morning, by the way. I know it's yeah, very good early morning. for you. Yeah, thanks for yeah, joining. Uh, uh, before I answer that, uh, I just wanted to uh, react to Alex. Uh, I first thought that Alex was a woman because uh, – uh, oh his uh twitter profile is like uh mostly nfts uh so it, mm -hmm. it was kind of surprising that it was a man with a deep voice uh mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so uh finally nice to meet you alex uh i've been reading your blog a lot okay uh so for the uh, uh top Rot philippines facebook group it's mostly uh speculation on uh flash challenges Mm -hmm. and users trying to borrow moments from other users but uh it has been uh difficult to borrow from other users because uh we mostly don't know each other and uh you have to um trust those other users uh when you land those moments but uh for the more like um established uh, members in the group i think they're, uh, they're able to borrow uh, these moments mm -hmm. uh, these mm -hmm. flash challenges have uh, really increased interest uh not just in top shot moments but it, uh in watching nba games as well mm -hmm. since uh, users try to monitor uh like which players uh reach the challenges first and uh Usually they speculate before uh, the games occur. Nice man, nice man. And for anybody yeah. that doesn't know, we had we had Marvin, a few other guys from the Top Shot Philippines group. They got an excellent 
Facebook community, which which I'm a part of. I'm gonna be honest with you, Marvin. I don't go on Facebook much anymore, but every time I do go, I just read through like some of the latest comments. It's the main thing that I do on Facebook, if anything, is, is hang out or yeah. is check out that group. Um, what else are you guys up to in that group these days, man? Like, what are you guys? Are you guys building anything? Are you guys doing any uh, meetups? I know it's, it's probably COVID, like there is everywhere else there. But what else? What else is going on in the Top Shop Philippines group? Uh, well, we haven't had any meet meetups yet. No, uh, yeah, because okay. uh, COVID has been tough here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so most of it uh, is just uh, uh, through the Facebook group or through uh, the Facebook Messenger group. Like we have a, a pack drop uh, Messenger group wherein users mm -hmm. would be alerted. Uh, it was uh, created uh, for the like those those uh, like um. Like the pack drops we had before in S two, where mm -hmm. the, like the surprise pack drops. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's also where um, you're talking stress you're tests, man. Yeah, you're talking yes, stress, stress tests test from a bygone yeah, yeah. era of stress tests that yeah. are no longer. Unfortunately, you know, and that's another thing. Actually, we didn't ask Jacob this, and it filled the out if you're still around. But that's another thing we we forgot to ask Jacob is, will we ever see stress tests again? I think the last one we had was maybe two three months ago. Um, but man, yeah. those stress tests were, uh, were that's, that is a marker of, of 2021 NFTs right there as a top shot stress test. Um, when Jacob was here earlier, I wanted to ask him about top shot economist. Uh, oh yeah. But, yeah. But yeah, but I was, uh, kind of afraid to ask. <laughs> 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 well, I mean, I don't know. I don't know what the deal is with top shot with the top shot economist, but I will say, I mean, you know, the last like week or so, it's like the the you know things things are definitely doing well. You know, the market the market is 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 wild. It's a bit all over the place, but I mean, you know, um, it's it's definitely not tanking. So that's that's definitely a good thing. Uh, but yeah, that's a great question. Where is the economist? We haven't seen a we haven't seen a blog from them in a while. So um, you know, maybe maybe we will hear something back from them sometime soon. Uh, Marvin, what's what is what is the bold prediction for twenty twenty two, man? Like what what is coming our way? Marvin, he's still there. Marvin going once, going twice. Oh no, he's been booted. He's in the listeners now. Okay, it's all right. Twitter spaces is, is not always perfect, um, and we had Tatiana here, but now she's she's been booted as well. It looks like so. She looks like she's also been kicked out of the Twitter spaces. Mint juiciest mint juice from the showroom. We're talking about not messing with different communities and mint juice. Um, what 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 is going on in the hustle showroom these days? What up, LG? Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Um, we just went through a crazy twelve days of Christmas sort of partnership with uh, Luke Dick and L and uh, the Judge, which was huge press during. Uh, during the holidays which was a ton of fun mm. and so i'm surprised to to see mike roll in and roll out of the hustling showroom so quickly uh and you know great guy i hope i hope he's not afraid of us i don't want people afraid of the hustlers <laughs> the hustlers are here to support mike come on we'll, we'll support you no matter what I think I think you know I think we uh, you know we're 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 starting to learn the different attitudes and vibes of the different communities in Top Shot. So, for sure, for um, sure. you know, so dude, tell us tell us about the Hustle and Showroom, man, because I think that's this is a great time to kind of plug it and and for the people who don't know who may be Hustle and Show holders uh, to tell us a little bit more about the community there. Yeah, it's like it's a, about? just an or like it came out of uh, just like conversations with Luke Dick when he started the Monsters back in August. We were at the bottom. We were like, hey, we'd like to see some more utility come out of these sets. And uh, Pack Rip sort of sent out the bat signal and everything just went nuts after that. Um, but what we're about is it's interesting to hear people talk about. Um, what they see coming or things about Top Shop that they're looking forward to in the next year throughout this uh, spaces. You know, Clegane uh, mentioned earlier about like, oh, we have this sort of staking that's going on. And you see that with Top Shot or you see that with the Hustle and Showroom. It's like this sort of uh, fake staking, I guess, where if you hold these moments that you typically wouldn't hold for players you can get utility out of them. But then we're also seeing things like um, El Dumba just said, 
about empowering these communities. And I think that that's where I kind of saw an opportunity with the Hustle and Showroom was there's so many people out there that thought, oh, I want Top Shot to be this. Oh, I want Top Shot to be that. So it was like, we all want it to be something. There's a lot of smart people in this space. What if we built a community and we supported each other and gave ourselves a voice to try and empower and leverage that community? I wonder what set would be a good sort of vehicle to do that. Now, you know, you could look at a lot of different ones, but for me, I saw Hustle and Showroom with, you know, 6,532 Ja Morantz as the bottleneck is an awesome opportunity to do that. Um, which sort of gates itself against people that just want to come in and, you know, be disturbers or just like stir the pot and make nonsense. So anybody that comes into the showroom, like we sort of know they're a serious collector and is like they're about it. Um, we haven't had to boot anyone from our Discord ever. Everything's been able to be handled in house. People are super supportive and. You know, we see a lot of the same things other communities see, um, DFS, speculation. We have a poker room in there. We have contests all the time. It's just super fun space and about creating utility. Um, and now it's like gotten to the point where we try and are making partnerships, whether it's with like the nifted displays and trying to hand those out to people and give people um, discounts. So that's sort of the way that, we're we're going but mike z baby don't be afraid of us the hustlers are just here to support i just want to say I, I'm, not, I'm not afraid it's a warm welcoming community i love the hustlers <laughs> showroom i just i also love the devin booker top shot debut that was staring at me uh I, I i i'm already responding to twitter notifications i'm so sorry i'm so sorry <laughs> hustling showroom nothing but love for everybody in every community except for yeah, all love, man. <laughs> Just shade. It's funny. <laughs> Dumbo's already gone, man. He's he's not even here anymore, man. He's gone. That was intentional. That was intentional, one hundred percent. Man, juicy. It's great to hear, man. It's great to see those communities evolve, really, because you know those. Um, you know, I, I I think a lot of people. Uh, I, I think it. I think it is the Nine Lives Lounge. I kind of had started that. You know, create your own utility movement. Shout out to to Plunge and. Um, uh, uh, the, the rest of the crew there that, that kind of started that movement. It's great to see other communities kind of take that on. So, um, you know, great to see that. Any, any previews for anything that might be coming to the Hustle and Showroom in the near future or, or, or any other kind of interesting partnerships, community features? And we're always hustling, but we like to keep our cards close to the vest. We are working mm -hmm. on uh, giving our hustle members more of a voice. So we've created this thing called the copy room. So we're trying to uh, get our members to write blogs or just do any sort of media and then connect with people that are either at first mint or at pack rip media or at moment ranks or wherever so that we can chat um, and give our guys and our hustlers, um, you know, a, a platform, right? And, you know, we have plenty of smart people in there to help copy edit and make sure that things are looking good. But, you know, that's something that we really want to target going forward. Um, but, yeah. Okay, question question for the newcomers that we didn't have here all the way at the start of the conversation. And I'm, I'm talking Alex, Mitt, Marvin, and Tatiana that we want, I want to hear from in a second as well. Is it MGLE or is it Meagle? Meagle. <laughs> Alex, it's MGL for me. Uh oh, uh oh. Yeah, the, well, the hustlers say MGL. Like, John and Steph were two first person that I met in the space, so they teach me that. There you go. All right, all right. Well, that's the first. I think that's the second Meagles in Swicky. So there you go. Tatiana, are you there? Tatiana, maybe. She's here, but I mean, I think I think a lot of people. We're trying to get Veerman up as well, but I think everybody spaces are a little hit or, hit or miss for people, so it's okay. Um, well, it's wonderful. Mint, uh, it's a, a bold prediction for twenty twenty two on Top Shot. Anything you can share with us? Any, well, you're going to see thoughts? so much of the of the hustle and showroom going forward. That's definitely bold, but um, yeah, I love but it. um, look, I, I, and this is what Luke said, and, and he kind of stole my thunder. Uh, uh, 
yeah i i think that these communities like the hustle and showroom and more small communities and even the first mint you're going to start to see them empowered and we can really start to unlock what top shot what the top shot sports community can really be all about um i don't know if we really understand what that necessarily is yet but i every day i'm stunned by something that's going on in the showroom or on twitter that's just like wow and even if it's something simple like someone in the showroom being like oh hey i'm interested in you know getting into a flow project i'd like to get a job with them so everyone in the showroom just supports them retweets whatever it is to get him that support it's like that was easy you know like there's just these little micro things happening every day that are going to build up so i'd say strap in you know get engaged and uh think bold because we're all going to uh kind of head in that same direction together i love it man i love it the pa- that power of collective community right there is what you're talking about and that's that's definitely what we've been experiencing for the past year and it's great to see it evolve and especially now that people really know what they're talking about nfts and know know what's possible um be keen to see all the communities and, and people evolve there uh tatiana are you there i am here yo what's up hey can you guys hear me everyone can hear me right we got you yeah we can hear you i can hear you we're good we're good how's it going i'm good look y'all like I, I'm so glad y'all pushed this a little bit for me because I like woke up so late and I was like, oh Jesus. I'm like, it started like 20 minutes ago. I'm late. Oh man, I'm that person. But no, yeah, I'm doing good. I hope, you know, y'all are doing well as well. But um, yeah, I'm hearing some amazing responses and like shout out to Steve on here and Alex. Love to hear the responses and stuff. But yeah. What, what Tatiana, we just want to know is it, are you, do you say MGLE or Meagle? When you're talking about the metallic gold set, MGLE, what? <laughs> You've never heard the Meagle no, thing? No, I've never heard that. Like, <laughs> who uses that? See, that's see, see, that's that's how dated that whole thing is. So, okay, so so almost a year ago, like back in like March or May or, or sometime around then, this thing started about calling MGLEs Meagles because it's like a shorter term, like it's like an easier way to say it, right? It's kind of like if you if you input some vowels into into the acronym. And now it's taken on, it, it took on a life of its own for a while on Twitter and on streams where people would debate that. So, so I'm glad, I'm glad that you're on the MGLE turn uh, on MGLE side and that you're, you're, you know, you're, you're, you're uh, repulsed by the Meagle part. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, like there ain't nothing wrong with saying it the other way, but no, nah, I've been <laughs> that way from the start. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Tatiana, I mean, tell us, I mean, we've never, we've never had chatted with you. I've seen you kind of it, it come into the community um, and it also looks like you've got something big coming up. I mean, tell us, uh, I, I love to get a bit of more of an origin story from you because um, I'll admit you're one of the community members, one of the creators that I, I probably know the, the least well. Um, so, so tell us, like, tell us about your NFT journey when you found out about this stuff and then, and then your, and tell us about your Top Shot collection and what you got going on there. Yeah, look, um, it actually started with, my partner introduced me to NBA Top Shot, you know, as most people are aware, um, you know, I'm a basketball player. So this was just like a major no brainer when it came to, you know, jumping into this stuff. And this was kind of the first time I was aware of like NFTs properly, um, you know, years back as a kid, you know, you hear all this type of stuff, but you never really looked into it, you know, young and dumb type of thing. But now like I'm a little bit older and someone's like, you know, NFTs and basketball, but these are moments from the NBA. And I was like, oh man, I could only think of like the most amazing stuff, you know, including like MJ and all those type of moments. And I'm like, that stuff is stuff I've got to own, you know, Mm -hmm. or like Shaq coming in, breaking the rim type of thing. I was like, can you imagine having that? So I kind of started off like that. And my partner introduced me to, to that. And it just kind of was like, love at first sight, even though it wasn't like perfect. Top shot wasn't perfect at the time. And we've come such a long way. I was just so invested from the beginning. Um, you know, I think it's such a, such a cool thing to own, if you will, these moments in these like games. And you, you like, if you've watched the games as well, it makes it so much better. Um, and it just kind of started from there. I've only been in the NFT space since, uh, it was like early Feb, late, ja- yeah, late January, Feb 
for Top Shot. And then Top Shot introduced me to, you know, the other other NFTs. And I kind of just jumped in from there. But um, yeah, that's kind of like where it started. What does your Top Shot collection look like right now? Oh my God, y'all would be so disappointed with me. Like it looks absolutely <laughs> trash. Like I'm up here being like Top Shot for life and my, my stuff is trash. I think, like, I, I'm not even gonna, like I'm not gonna cap and be like, yeah, you know, my collective score is like 12K. Mm -hmm. That That is just absolute like BS. Um, mm -hmm. But like I took a step back a little bit um, because of, you know, when you jump into something new, you've got to understand how things work. Um, you know, and I talk to people like Steve about, you know, branding and engagement and that type of stuff and asking what he uses. And because, you know, NBA Top Shot and the NFT space is so close together, I just kind of like took a seat back and was like, how do I engage with my NBA Top Shot community, but as well as the NFT and find a way to kind of, you know, keep them, keep them intertwined. And of course, they, they're seamlessly intertwined. But so yeah, I took a step back. My collection is ass. Um, but you know what? I am I'm a diehard basketball fan, um, NBA, WNBA especially, um, you know, for obvious reasons. But yeah, so it's it's not looking good, but we're looking to focus on it this year. I'm actually really excited and um I'm kind of focusing back on Top Shot, believe it or not. But um yeah. Wow. Okay. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna I'm just gonna too long didn't read that. Uh, Tatiana has a terrible Top Shot collection, but she loves the product. That's it. That's, Look, that's, that's the summary. It's not, where it that's needs the to summary. Be. it's not where it needs to be. It's not where it needs to be. That, that's all I'm going to say. But we're working on it. Don't do say too hard. But yeah, no, we're working where, on where it. Where does it need to be? No, no. Where does it need to be? What are you, what are you missing from the collection that you need? Oh, my what God. I'm missing. You, what do you I'm think? actually missing so much. But I need my collective school to go up. Um, I'm like... There's just so many like LBJ moments that I need want. Mm -hmm. Um, Dame, Steph. Um, Giannis is someone I think is there are gems in there. Like it's slightly saturated just a little bit on him, but like I mean, he's an amazing player. Um but yeah, there is there's just so many I'm like focusing more on the legendary stuff, you know, not really into commons per se, but yeah, I think like I explain to people, challenges and everything is like kind of what like fuels me for the in the top shot market because i'm an athlete i immediately want to complete these challenges so yeah we're working on it it's not where it needs to be but you know come back okay. to me in like six months <laughs> okay here's what we're gonna do listen uh tatiana's collection by her own words is ass okay <laughs> so and we've heard what she needs uh what i want to do is go around the room and you guys, everybody else here has got to give me like one, one, you guys got to plug the thing that Tatiana's got to get into on Top Shot, like what she's got to pick up. Okay. And I want to start, I want to start with the master who's finally here, Steve Bierman. Steve, what we need from you is tell, get, tell Tatiana how to turn her, her collection from ass to uh, not ass, whatever the opposite is, gold, let's say. Oh man, you're putting me on the spot here. Uh... I I really don't know. Can I go last? <laughs> okay, go last. Go last. Who wants to go first? I feel I feel like I feel like Clegane's is just just throthing right now. He wants to just give his take right here. <laughs> I'm I'm listening, like trying to hold my tongue and just say all the things on my mind at once. Yes. Um, yeah. There you go. Yeah. I mean, if we're talking like collecting strategies for 2022, um, there's been a lot of stuff going around in our discords and just like on Twitter. Um, I'm surprised no one mentioned like the team leaderboards yet. I think that's, mm -hmm. you know, something that's maybe undervalued right now, just because there's no, you know, real news about it. And a lot of it's kind of just speculation. And, you know, uh, Roam said that he, there's potential for, you know, courtside seats or, you know, things that money can't buy as potential rewards um, for like the, you know, people at the very top. So I personally have been focusing on that a lot. Um, my goal is to maintain at least top 10 on my Nets leaderboard. Um, not financial advice, but, you know, maybe try to get up as close as you can, you know, because I know that's not attainable for everybody, but I'd imagine there'll be maybe different tiers of rewards, depending on like, if you're top five, top 10, top 50, a hundred, you know, et cetera. Um, another thing, you know, people mentioned already kind of was collecting sets for um, airdrops to get new packs, which I think is really great. Um, another thing too, is just Momorang's play. And I know the judge mentioned it, but um, our Discord, especially, um, you know, being part of Momorangs and having our shot talk in Discord, um, 
we talk about that all day. Like it's it's popping right now. People are like showing their lineups, like speculating. Oh, what do you think we can, we could do? Who's low on their ten day averages? Like who has the most opportunity for like a big uh, scoring boost? Um, again, I mentioned Kyrie is coming back today, so we're like kind of debating should we play him because it's been so long since he's seen the court. Like, is it worth it? Uh, things of that nature. So, um, and then also, I think a really good collecting strategy is superstars, right? Um, you know, they're going to be around for the long haul. Those are always going to be the moments that new collectors coming into the space, you know, what are they going to look to buy? It's going to be the players that they know. Um, it's going to be those superstar moments and even the common ones, right? Like we have, you know, the Series 2 40Ks and the Series 3 uh, 60Ks. But, you know, those numbers, while they seem big now, down the line, they won't be so big, right? I'm sure there'll be a time when we have hundreds of thousands of, of mints, like, you know, regularly within the base set. So um, that would probably be my main thing. If you're just kind of looking to up your collector uh, score, like your your moment values, uh, superstars aren't a bad place to start. Top shot, they've used any badges. Like that's what new collectors are going to be drawn towards, in my opinion. My God, you charge for the service, man. This is like a full on strategy <laughs> session. Jeez, I said, let's go around the room and give advice. one thing. And you're just like, hey, it. here's the entire Top Shot playbook. Oh my God. <laughs> I try, I try. Okay, hold on. We got, we got to go around the room though. Marvin, do you agree with all that? Do you agree with all that advice for, for Tatiana's portfolio? Um, yeah, uh, I think I agree with Clegane's. Uh, we're trying to climb up the leaderboards. Uh, right now, I think... Um, if you're a new top shot user, you should look into S2 moments since uh, the prices are uh, pretty low and the collector score is decent compared to S3 moments. Uh, so um, maybe new users could buy um, S2 moments of superstars and hope that, and hope that uh, these moments uh, are included in flash challenges so like players like chris paul anthony davis um raymond green Embiid, low kick some of their s2 moments are pretty cheap now uh, and they have like a huge chance of being included in flash challenges in the future so i think that's one advice uh uh i'd like to give to uh new users for 2022 Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mint, do you agree with that? Or Mint, is it to just come join the Hustle and Showroom and, and get in there? I mean, you already know. <laughs> 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 like what? As as Mike, as Mike, what uh, what do you what he get for that Ja Morant uh, Hustle mm -hmm. and Show moment? Like I don't, it's through the roof right now. I mean, mm -hmm. that's crazy. So yeah, I mean, not everybody's going to be able to to snatch that up at that price right now. Um, I mean, I, I can't disagree with Clegane. I, I do think it is interesting right now that we're talking about pumping. So I've been trying to hold Dapper back right now from like mm -hmm. a strategy perspective just so that I can complete, compete in these challenges. And I really like watching these tiered challenges now. I hope to see more of tiered challenges and more tiered stuff coming down the line from mm -hmm. Top Shot. I really like uh, that component. But for me, I'm trying to hold Dapper that I can maybe buy those rare moments if I need them for something and then sell them after the challenge um, and just keep my Dapper up so that I can keep participating and keep playing the games, right? Tatiana, how do you, how do you feel now? You got, you got advice from the experts. You feel like you're ready to build your collection. Yeah, I mean, you make it you make it sound like I'm a newbie out here, but I mean, I like, I like oh my <laughs> hey, the, listen. You started with your my collection is ass. Okay, look, that's what you said. Look, so, <laughs> listen, what do you think is gonna happen on this real. panel? People are gonna tell you what you need. Look, I want it to be real because if like someone looks at my collection and be like, "What the hell is this girl talking about? She don't know shit." Like, but all that <laughs> advice is absolutely amazing. Um, yeah, y'all definitely deserve to be. Um, like pay for that advice for sure but no it was it was good advice to, to take in i definitely need to up my stuff but yeah no i appreciate it tatiana we gotta do we gotta have you back in like a month or two and we want we want we want 
you to feel better about your collection. We need you to come back with an improved sentiment and uh, we want you to be stoked about what you got. No more of this, my collection is ass stuff. Yeah, yeah, I'm working on it. Don't worry, I'm working on it for sure. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm on the show now, like I'm on the stage, everyone's gonna be looking and be like, okay, we had her then. Did she take <laughs> any of that advice and like of her collection? And I can't come back and be like, yeah, you know what? Um, It's still ass and uh, I need help. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. Uh, Steve Veerman, we're almost out of time here. Steve is the master. Steve is Steve is the one who who gave us that alpha on series two, having a very high value for collector score when a lot of those moments were still two or three dollars. Steve Veerman, you always have such a great take for the future of Top Shot. Where are we at right now? What is your current strategy, and what 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 can we expect in the new year? Uh, I think it's been said, but the, uh, the the team leaderboards I think is is huge. Um, mm -hmm. I've noticed it especially on like the Raptors team. We've had like uh, I guess mini battles for like the top spot, and actually the person mm -hmm. who has I'm I'm second place by the way. So mm -hmm. the person in first place just you'd think oh um, they must be like a whale, and then they've stacked like legendaries. No, no, the person who's in first place stacked um, series two commons. And that's the cheapest way to um, basically get grind out and accumulate like, the highest collector score possible. Um, and yeah, I really think that's the future being able to like um, do things like team specifically, whether it's, you know, tickets or whatever. So um, team leaderboards would be huge. I think, you know, the, the whole bidding thing that'll be implemented hopefully sometime this year is going to change things. Um, mm -hmm. I think I, I'm hoping that we can have a little bit of a collection management um, this year at some point, right? Some tools would help. Um, and with the new emphasis on like team, or sorry, on, on complete sets, mm -hmm. I would like to see some feature at some point in time to move complete sets with one transaction, as opposed to having to list individual moments, basically mm -hmm. the ability to mm -hmm. group moments together and sell as a single transaction, I think would be amazing. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, those are, those are some high level Right. Um, some high level things like, yeah, those are all realistic though, Steve, what is your bold prediction? My bold prediction. Oh man. We need the bold prediction, man. Something wild that it like, it has to be something that you don't think is actually possible for this okay. year. Well, uh, I'll make a prediction that it's not crazy bold. There's nothing to base this on at all. Um, it's more of like a hope and a dream. Uh, mm. that, that's the, uh, that's the 75th serial number. That's like, you know, the diamond, uh, moment. Right. It hasn't yeah. been talked about at all. They haven't mentioned it. They haven't even acknowledged it really. Mm. Um, I'm thinking there might be something there. I'm thinking mm. there might be some, I'm hoping there's some <laughs> perk, whatever. And I think they would be kind of neat. Um, I just find it a little bit interesting. They haven't really acknowledged it and it's been there for a while. Um, we all get it. It's the 75th year. I'm thinking maybe it's involves the all-star game or the playoffs or the finals or something but i think it's a really interesting opportunity for them to kind of jump on and, and you know anyone who holds one or whatever can do something with it i have no idea beauty i love that yeah always reading the tea leaves okay guys well i think i think we're just about out of time there um i do want to wrap up with with a simple uh, uh a yes or no question for for everybody here beta are we out of it this year in 2022 yes or no alex alex already unmuted ready to say something yes, yes, yes. how many times yes i should say we can barely we can barely hear you man oh yes can you hear yes me? okay yeah there we go that's better <laughs> i say no no. Okay. Oh. No. Boo. No from Phil. <laughs> I say no chance. <laughs> no. Okay. Okay. Mike Z. Yes. Steve Veerman. No. Oh, there you go. That's oh, okay. man. <laughs> two, two. Mint. Mint juiciest. There's no way that these guys can get their stuff together and get out of beta. Wow. No wow. Wow. Okay. All right. Uh, Clegane's. I think we have to. I feel like we're so close. Like on, I know, like we said that last year, but it really feels closer than ever. I, I say yes. Oh my god, that's three and three, Marvin. Yes or no, beta this year. We're out. 
Marvin, are you there? Marvin, don't leave us hanging. It's forever a tie. No, oh, wait, Tatiana Mar- came Marvin back. is smart. Marvin's smart. He doesn't want to break the tie and be the good guy or the bad guy. So he's just not going to respond. So that's it. Tatiana, are you there? Yeah, I'm um, out of beta. Are we leaving beta? Yes or no? Um, I want to be, but I'm going to have to say no. Oh, I wanted. Oh. I, look, I wanted to be so bad, so bad. I honestly do. I just don't. I don't know if we're ready yet. Okay. okay. Marvin just gave the hundred percent sign, so that means he agrees with that. Hold on, but Tandy, Tandy has come running out of the tunnel back onto the stage <laughs> to share his take. Yeah, I'm finally out of the water slide again. Uh, I would say that. As much as I wish we would be out of beta, I don't think we will be. I think this team is a bunch wow. of super perfectionists. And I think that, you know, as much as we think everything is just humming along, myself included, I think they have much grander visions. I think we have to see that app come out. It's got to also be working super smooth. Uh, so I feel like there's other large milestones that haven't hit yet. Uh, so I would say we're not out of beta in S3. Wow. Wow. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, well, there you have it, folks. Um, Marvin, I don't know if you're there, but you gave the hundred signs, so we'll take it. We'll take it that you have the same take. That's I think that's a few more not out of beta than there are out of beta. But listen, folks, we got we got 360 days left, so that's a lot of time. Uh, 360 days ago, you know, we we most of most of us didn't even weren't even thinking beta. So plenty of time for the Top Shot team, Dapper team, uh, to to blow us away with with whatever's coming next. Plenty of time to change our strategies, and I just want to give a big shout out to everybody who came up today uh, to chat their strategies, share their thoughts, share some personal details about what's going on with them as well. Um, I think it's 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 going to be a hell of a year in the Top Shot space and the Dapper space, just like it was last year. Also, want to give a big shout out to the day ones, the First Mint crew, uh, everybody who's who's one of our holders. Um, you know, wouldn't be able to do this without you. And also, shout out to the to the broader Top Shot community. Thanks for being with us. It's been a year of the First Mint. Uh, been a year of covering Top Shot and doing it in a, in a you know very excited and, and, and passionate way every day. So appreciate everybody here. Appreciate all the folks uh, on the Dapper side, Top Shot side, everybody at the First Mint making this happen. So um, thank you for joining again. This has been the unofficial Top Shot 2022 preview. Hope you got something helpful out of it. Hope you got some some to help shape your collecting strategy or or you know maybe some some collections to compare yours to. I uh, don't want anybody to, to, to think down on their collection. It's a long road ahead. A lot of sets, packs, and stuff to come up. A lot of great opportunities coming up on Top Shot, no doubt. So uh, thanks, everybody, for listening in. And uh, we'll we'll have to do this again. It's great to do a big group one like this and, and do this live spaces. So have a fantastic day. And like Jacob said, it sounds like we got a pack heading our way between now and January 15th. So we'll see you guys uh, in the queue for that one. Cheers, everybody.